It's 2 p.m. Detroit, and you know what that means. Detroit media icon Ryan Armani, University of Michigan great Braylon Edwards, and of course, Maz are about to take over on Woodward Sports. Every day, 2 to 4 p.m., it's the best Detroit sports talk on Detroit's best sports network. Woodward Sports. Yeah, that new intro, Braylon. It's like the same intro. With one no, extra video. they use some of the same. I mean, they use the footage of you catching the ball over. So we want to use that same footage. Yeah, I, I thought I was, I was looking forward to something different. They did have Armani busting that, that that shot. That was a lot of fun well, that day. And you remember the old intro was like Armani Edwards and Maz. Like it had like a weird yeah. hiccup in it. No longer. We got it fixed. New intros coming for every show right here on the Woodward Sports Network. Uh, thank you for joining us this afternoon. My name is Stick, filling in for Ryan Ermani. Uh, Anson will be sitting in this chair tomorrow. Ryan is out all week. That is Braylon Edwards. Of course, we have the clean-shaven Pete in the TD. But look at how, look right, at how, boys. Look at how got, clean it is. It's got the Easter, goatee, man. man. Had to get, get it polished up for Easter. It's, right. so, it's so funny how people polish up for like certain things. Mother's Day, Easter, you know, like uh, an anniversary. Wow. Well. I keep polish at all times, man. Yeah, see, you don't got to get ready if you stay ready. As I'm, as I look like. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we got Mike in the sound booth. Silent Mike. How was, how was your Easter, Mike? Uh, I was pretty well. How about you? Pretty good. You spent it with your wifey. Yep, wife and my mother-in-law. Uh, what'd you guys eat? Um, we really didn't eat anything. Um, it was my wife's birthday this weekend. Okay. What? There it is. So what'd you do? Um, we got in. some hopcat, and then um, we stayed at the house, played some board games, had a good time. Awesome, man. What type of board dope. games you playing? Um, Uno, and we have about several different versions of Monopoly. We had the Cheaters <laughs> Edition, we have the uh, City Builder Edition, okay. and we had the uh, Political Edition. So that's my girl's favorite game. Like, I refuse to play her in Monopoly. Because like, <laughs> we're both competitive, but I refuse to play her in Monopoly. Um, the uh, Uno. The new rules came out like Uno actually came out with the rule because obviously everybody is always you just keep dropping them the draw twos, draw twos, draw four. You try to keep repetitiously do it. They say you can't place more than one or I think you can't place more than one. Uno, really? Yeah, Uno because you know how you know how brothers do. You know what I'm saying? We, we, hey, draw two, draw five, draw six, draw eight, whatever. But the Uno came out on X, which really is Twitter, and they said you cannot make a person draw back to back draw twos or draw wow. four. It pissed me off, but I like I ain't see it. And it's so funny because everybody that commented said, Uno don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, you, <laughs> the creators of the game. Because we've been stick, we've been playing Uno that way forever. Since I since like 12, right. 13. Right. Like, yo, nah, man. Draw two, draw two, draw four, still on me. So they came out and officially said we've been playing it the wrong way. And you know what, Uno? Bug off. <laughs> yeah, stacking is still a thing. Bug, bug off. It's still a thing for sure. How was yours? Good, man. We actually played Uno as well, ironically. <laughs> yeah. Are you draw two, draw two, back to back? We got that, but we got the Uno where you got to press the button and the thing like spits cards at you randomly. What is this? I've never heard of this before. You never heard? It's like, I forget. It's like Uno Attack is what Uno, it's called. Oh, Uno Attack. Look, look at him. Yeah, he, he knew yeah. too. He yeah. Was, yeah. We were oh, playing that, the exact attack. same thing, coincidentally. Yeah, Uno Attack? <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Like, yeah. You know, Uno Attack's legit. It's legit? Yeah. yeah. You got to make me go get the game, man. It throws an extra hit because you got to, like, you may get, like, okay, you got to press the button twice. Pass it, and they gotta press the button. Press, it, and there's like the anticipation of it shooting uh, okay. a ton of cards at you. Sometimes they may shoot ten, twelve cards at you. Oh, why? Wow, I gotta make sure I lean to the side. You know, Good for the whole thing. family. Good for the whole family. All right, we got a lot to discuss. But before we do that, are you a fan of this day? Stick this day, April Fool's Day. April Fool's. Are you a fan? I've never been a fan. You know, ironically, April Fool's Day has played a very important role in my life. Like uh, it seems like. There's always something significant that happens on April Fool's yeah. Day in my life. Like uh, 93 one DRQ, remember that radio oh, station? 100%. Flip formats on April Fool's Day. And kept, and was legit, though. And it was legit. That's a tough day. And, yeah, having to call your mom be like, I just got fired. She's like, shut up, Sammy. I'm like, no, I actually got fired. Like, um, And then, you know, I saw in my memories today, our first remote live broadcast for Woodward Sports was on April 1st. Uh, three years ago, we were at the Brass Rail for opening day. I was there. The snowy opening day when oh. Miggy hit the home wow. run. That was our first ever remote live broadcast. And I've been fired on uh, April 1st. Uh, a lot of, lot of fun yeah. things happening. But, okay. yeah, I, I don't mind. I like people playing in jest. You know, I, I don't take anything serious today. It, it's just always like you're not going to get me. Like, you see no. you see the Caitlin Clark is out for the game, and then she has an elbow injury. Knock it off. You see that Calvin we, Johnson came We posted came out. Calvin's coming back. Out. It's it's harmless fun, but at the same time, I'm just like, I, 
I don't know. Maybe I have. Maybe I got scarred. Yeah, we didn't get as much hate this year as we did a couple years ago when we posted. So I forget what we posted on April Fool's Day, but man, people it were was, like, "I'm unfollowing." Nah, 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 you're unprofessional. It's like, yeah, we know. We know where I'm. Like, Dan Campbell got fired or something like that. I forget exactly what it was, uh, but people were going nuts. So this year when we did our April Fools thing, at the end we put April Fools. So no, uh, like, I saw like, that in parentheses. That's why I said it kind of Feel softens lead. it. It's like okay, it's a joke. We can all laugh along, but people were taking it seriously. What's like, the worst one you've ever got? Have I like like got, a, like a like bad? I got got. I, yeah, I got. Oof. Really can't even remember getting got. I remember getting people. I got got bad one time. By like, who? The girl? Chick, yeah, this, yeah. You're, I, you, you already know where I'm going with it. It was a chick that I had stopped talking to, and she hit me with April Fool's Day. I didn't find it funny. She said, uh, hey, guess what? Um, I was like. Oh, she get the pregnant? The pregnant one. And this is a girl that what? we stopped talking like you know, a month and a half before or something like that, so it was well within the time. I didn't like her at all. It, was, it pissed me off. And when she said April Fool's, I was just so relieved that I just didn't even care about the anger anymore. I just never talked to her again. Jesus. Like, like the gall on that girl to pull out the pregnancy. Uh, she has card. some stones. She has some stones. Yeah, no, I, no, nobody's ever done. I mean, I've been lied to about pregnancies, but not on April Fools. Yeah, well, <laughs> at least it was an April Fools. That joke. comes with the territory. Uh, shout out to everybody in the chat. Thank you guys for being a part of the show. Yes, be, see, people loving the Uno attack. Saying it's all right. I gotta get this. So it's Target, Walmart, obviously. It's out there. Okay. It's out there. It's okay. in the streets. It's not secret. Uh, Maz put together a pretty good rundown today. We're gonna be talking. Uh, oh, Pete. Pete. Pete, Pete put me, this bro. together. Oh, the the student. Pete. The student he has become already. the teacher. He just, he just, this is this is this is Pete's work right thing, here, man. man. Well, we got final four. Then Pete, why don't you tell us a little bit about what we're gonna talk about today? I like well, it. Hey, well, hey, I appreciate. Oh, that's very nice. Yeah, I appreciate that. We got Cam Sutton turning himself in. We got Rasheed Rice joining the. Oh uh, yeah, we gotta talk know, about he, that. He can't be fleeing scenes of accidents. We got the NCAA Final Four. Greg Campy of Oakland U. He gets a pretty interesting gift. And the Tigers 3-0 and to start the season. Let's do it up, boys. Yeah, what do you want to start with, Pete? You, hey, it's your show, run, baby. No, the rundown starts with Cam Sutton. That's the news of the day, baby. All right, yeah, if you didn't hear over the weekend, I believe it was yesterday, Cam Sutton turned himself in. You can see that video here. Um, I mean, just still a crazy, crazy story that's still developing. Yeah. I mean, we still don't know all the details of it and what came to be what exactly he did but he's finally facing the music he's finally um manning up to the situation and i mean i think when this news story broke braylon you and i were on the air yeah we were and we talked about it for a good hour and you know i think i think we did a good job of being reserved not judging uh but i think the one thing that we both thought was running yeah made it very suspicious yeah, one of them saying, you know, when a warrant is issued for something that you know you clearly have done, at the end of the day, you get with your attorney, you get with your lawyer, you know, you may be the person that you trust, maybe a mother, a father, a grandmother, and you, know, you guys come up with a plan, but you turn yourself in. You know, you, can't, you turn yourself in, soften the blow, and get start getting to the crux of a thing, man. But when you flee, and we talked about it, like, that was the one thing about it. Like, we were on both sides. We said, hey, we're not saying you did this, not saying you didn't do this. This is just what we're saying in the moment. Right. But the one thing we both say, fleeing the scene is crazy, especially in 2024. Uh, fleeing the you know, fleeing period, uh, which we'll talk about Rashi Rice, but leaving the scene, ignoring the warrant. Like, why? Like, why? And, you know, you can be scared all you want to, but, you know, you do things, you have to face a consequence. So I just hope that, you know, this situation somehow is, is, a, is a more dumbed-down version of what's been said. Obviously, it's been said strangulation is what she's uh, claiming, saying that he strangled her. So... I'm hoping there's a dumbed down version of it and, and he can get his life back on track. Mm -hmm. But if it's not, then, you know, maybe this is a wake up call for whatever demons or something that he was dealing with and he needed to be set down. Yeah. And him waiting so long to turn himself in, it, it really is strange. Yeah. Right. And to me, what's even more strange is we haven't gotten more details in this story than what we had two weeks ago when it first broke and me and you were talking about it on the air. Like, we still don't, the, 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 the person pressing charges hasn't come forward with their side of the story. Yeah. We haven't seen a police report, this which you normally see in these situations. And what's even more bizarre that I think we learned the after Lions, the fact yeah. is that he was in Allen Park yeah. when the news broke. And we were all sitting here looking on Twitter like, is this real? Is it not Warrant Wednesday? It wasn't April not? Fool's Day, I'll tell you that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Like if the news broke today. But he was in Allen Park and still elected not to turn himself into officials, not to make a public statement, right. not to go on social media to defend himself, 
and he's waited this long to go into custody. And I'm not sure what happened. Is he going to post bond? Probably. Yeah. But I don't know what his bond's going to be because he's clearly a flight risk taking too long to turn himself in. That's uh, true, but he eventually did. And, and that was the other thing, too. It didn't seem like um, seemed like Florida, the county he's in, it didn't seem like they were really pressing the issue. It seemed like they were kind of making light of it, didn't press the issue, and that's why it's taking so long. Also, too, you know, who knows where he was at? Was he out of the country? Was he in a place where he couldn't? Is he you know, getting his vacation out of the way? But it's <laughs> it's interesting that the Lions waited so long to say something. Now, I'm not going to say whatever, but the Lions waited. The Lions knew that day, and they didn't issue anything. They didn't say anything until two days later, I believe, is when they said that he was in the facility. So that's also kind of interesting, too. Yeah, because one thing that we talked about was, like, this was Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell's really first opportunity to show that, hey, you're a Dan Campbell guy, you're a Brad Holmes guy, yeah. you're my guy, I'm going to have your back no matter what. Now, they didn't come out and defend him. No. They didn't do anything of that sort. But I think what they did by not doing anything quietly showed that they still had his back. Right? Okay. Like if you're, okay. if you're like a player that. and you're in the team facility and this news breaks and the Lions are like, listen, you know we got to let you go, but here's we're also not going to be snitching on you right, right now. Go get out of the building. We don't want to be a part of this. You you could be anywhere else but here right now. But what we aren't going to do is go turn you over to the feds either. So I, I think that, like, as a player and a yeah. culture, and I'm always looking for the locker room end of it and what that sends to the other players, it shows that, listen, these guys stand on business. You mess up, you're off the team, right? Yeah. But they're also they're you're my guy. Still my guy. I'm not going to screw you over. Yeah, it's true. And the Lions were able to play coy, too. They were able to say, hey, look, we told him to turn himself in. So they were able to use that. But also, you know, they had his back. You know, they gave him a couple extra hours or extra day or so to figure out what he was going to do. That's when the team shows you they care. That's when other players can say, hey, look, you look at the situation with Aaron Hernandez, and I hate to bring that name up and everything that happened in that situation. But look at Robert Kraft in a moment. He came down in the weight room. Very similar. Mm -hmm. And you talked about Aaron Hernandez was there that day after the, it came out, what had happened. And Robert Kraft asked him a simple question. He said, hey, look, did you do this? And he said, I didn't. Robert Kraft had his back, chose to believe in him. So when franchises believe in you like that, that's when guys want to play and guys want to come to those teams, man. Yeah, because that's to me, you that's, get the, that's the sub story underneath all of yeah. this. Like, how did Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell navigate this very tricky thing to not only show support, but also show the heavy hand? Yeah. And they did both, like, expertly. Right. I yeah. mean, if I'm a if I'm a player looking to go to a team, these are the guys I want to go to because they're not snitches, but they're also men and are going to hold me to a certain standard. Like I couldn't figure out how they were going to do this. Yeah. And that once again, Brad Holmes proves to be a master class in anything that he does. And he showed to me and I'm sure he showed to the less rest of that locker room that, hey, you're one of our guys. We're going to protect you. But also it's to it's to this point only. Yeah, 100%. And, you know, in the chat, feel free to comment so we can uh, read some of these these um, these comments and see how you guys feel about it. But, yeah, I think Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell have done the tough things since they've been here. There's certain players that they don't bring back, and we'll get into that because there's right. a player right now that's going to a team that is a team that we're worried about in the playoffs, but they've made the tough decisions on certain players. Hell, they fired who is uh, – they fired – what was uh, – my Anthony Lynn. Anthony Lynn was a guy that Dan Campbell – Loved him. Got out of retirement, yep. made him the offensive coordinator, and then, oh, by the way, before the season's over, he fired his buddy. Yep. He said, you're not getting it done. I got to fire you. Aubrey Pleasant. Fired Aubrey Pleasant. The guy that, that was Aaron Glenn's guy. Dan Campbell had to make the tough decision. So uh, they've made tough decisions, and Cam Sutton getting rid of him after the situation before finding all the details. It's just another, I would say, notch in their cap. Yeah, I, I think so, too. I think it's just another way of showing that they're excellent leaders. You know, it's easy to lead when things are easy, right? When yeah. you're winning, when everybody's happy, and it's hard to lead in difficult situations. That's actually when you need to be a leader, and, and they did a great job. Here you go. You talk about it's hard to do things when everybody's winning. Let's talk about a team that wins and a guy that's not going to win anymore. That's Rashi Rice. Oof. at Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, this weekend, his reporter star Rashi Rice has retained legal counsel and is expected to issue a statement tomorrow regarding – the situation, uh, this is from the police. It's a police spokesperson. This came from Adam Schefter. Told the Dallas Morning News that a driver in a Chevrolet Corvette and a driver in a Lamborghini were speeding and both lost control of their vehicles with the Lamborghini hitting the medium 
with a wall and causing a chain reaction collision involving four of the vehicles. So six in total, uh, including theirs. This is, is this footage, Pete? Yeah. Oh, wow. Here we got the footage right here. Yeah. Okay. So that's the Corvette. So that's Rashi Rice. That's on the wall right now. Yep. Wow. Yeah, and they caused other accidents. One of them was a mother with her son, of, I believe a four-year-old kid in that's, the car. That's this one here. Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, a wow. woman was injured in the crash that police uh, suspect involves Rashi Rice. Uh, says the man involved put her four-year-old child in danger and walked away without sympathy. I'm just blessed I was able to walk out of there. Uh, cleats were left in the land. You guys all right? And here you go. Yeah. See y'all later. We got to get in here, bro. Bye-bye. You guys just going to leave it? No. They just left the, they left the fucking Lamborghini. Uh, I, didn't know, I didn't know it was in there. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's all good. We can take everyone every once in a while. The news messes up, too. Hey, check this out. Before we dive into... Um, you know, what's going to happen, what we think is going to happen, is he going to play or not, or blah, blah, blah. We'll get into this. I am not a judgmental guy, and the reason why is because, Stick, you and I talk about it all the time. We have made our fair <laughs> share yep. of mistakes, and we're still making mistakes, at least yep. I know I am. I've even done this when I play ball. Like, hey, look, we used to race cars, but we wouldn't race on the freeway. We would race, you know, on the main It doesn't matter. We've done some right. of the done stuff, so I can't judge in that regard. Won't judge at all. I just say this. Come on, Rashi Rice. Like, with everything that is happening, with example after example, I mean, hell, you had Henry Ruggs two years ago. Right. Like, with the examples that... And Jalen the, Carter. Jalen Carter with the Alabama situation. Right. And you're on the freeway. And also, I look at it from this point. You're with the Kansas City Chiefs, the back-to-back -back Super Bowl champs right now who are going for three, and you're the, <laughs> you're the number best. one yeah. you're the wide only thing receiver. They have. The only on wide receiver. You you can't be racing on the freeway in the daytime. Like you were making three point five next uh, this past year, your uh, your contract goes up next year seven mil, uh, whatever it goes up to. You making another, you're putting yourself in a position to be on a championship franchise and and reap the benefits, much like a Tyreek Evans, a Tyreek Hill. Excuse me, I just can't see it, man. It's I, I, I just yeah. Uh, it's Bra tough. Brandon Katz bringing this up in the chat. Um, you know, Rice was smart. If he knew he was at the scene, his blood alcohol level was going to be tested. He could have failed that. And we don't know if he was drinking. That's all speculation. But yeah. also, you know, in a lot of these situations, these guys leave because they just don't want – they want to call their lawyer. They want to have yeah. those questions answered. Then they'll go uh, address it in the media. They know they messed up. I don't mind it. And listen, this is going to sound horrible. I don't mind the fleeing part. Like, actually, oh, I do. Who, well – Hear me out on that okay. one. Let's just assume the worst, which was there was alcohol involved. There was weed in, in, in the car. They were smoking. They owe you out, whatever it is. When that comes out, if that's the case, it's over. It's over in the NFL. It's over for your career, blah, blah, blah. Now with fleeing, they, because no one was injured, right. they won't even have jail time. They'll get a huge fine. They'll get probation. And now that's much easier to look at as a franchise. All right, well, it, it, it was very reckless, but nobody was injured. They got probation, no jail time. I can keep them on the team and have to deal with maybe a suspension of two games or so versus if there's alcohol involved and now you're operating, now there's a DUI, the blood alcohol level, yeah. and that's Texas? Texas don't F around like that. It's just a stupid decision, and you wish there was yeah. a Jiminy Cricket sitting on these guys' shoulders when these ideas get Trust in their me, head. I've because, done that listen, dumb stuff. I, my first car was a 96 Cherokee. Not Grand Cherokee. Cherokee, right? I used to have that thing up to 110 miles an hour on 696. Yeah, so Nin I'm never going to come down on these guys nah. for doing what they do. It's a dumb decision, but it's a decision I think I'm not going to say everybody makes. We've all gotten reckless in a car. But when you are that high profile, when you have that much money, yeah. go rent M1 Concourse, right? Yeah. Like, True. let's do this. Let's all bring out our Lambos. Like, you got to be smarter. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of these guys get a lot of money and they don't know how to act when it's just like, hey, man, we could use this money and go do anything we want in life. You know, yeah. like renting out M1 is great. You could do that. But, you know, we see it here in Detroit. People, we on the lodge with it going 150 miles an hour yeah. on the lodge. You know, mm. like, so I understand these guys love the speed. They love yeah. the adrenaline. But when you're putting common people at risk, you're overstepping a bound that you don't need to. Look, I'm going to speak from a 100% honest place. Look, in 2011, it was, I can't remember what time it was, whatever. I was going to my boat. My boat was at the DYC stick. DYC, downtown, on Belle Isle, 
was going down there because we were getting ready to go to Jobby Nooner Hey-o. in the morning. Hey-o. Shout out to Hey-o. Detroit. We, we was getting ready to go to Jobby <laughs> Nooner. So I had an R8, Audi, and we were leaving the place. We were at the establishment. Got on Belle Isle. It was raining a little bit. Probably was going a little faster than I should have. And, you know, lost control, ran into a, a, a pole, and was good. Person in the car was good. I was good. We were good. The situation was good. Was I going a little faster than I should have been? Yeah. Was I trying to break the sound barrier? No. <laughs> but when you're in these moments, and that's right. why I'm saying I'm not trying to pass judgment, you do things. You do dumb things in these moments. You have money. You, you press the envelope to a certain extent. You're still young. But now, now there's just more and more. Uh, there's more and more news. There's more and more stories. There's more and more reach between social media and yeah. the information is getting out of there. The Henry Ruggs is situation. The Alabama situation. There's more access that you have. You have access to sponsorships. You have access to look what happens when you succeed in Kansas City. You'll be in a subway commercial. Just ask Chad Henney. Just <laughs> ask those guys. So this is the access you have. These are the things that you're playing with. I think it's way more on the table now, and they know way more about it now than necessary we did in back in the day. They got to start paying attention. Yeah, just uh, you know, Javi uh, Nooner. There it is. Javi Nooner. <laughs> Amazing the time. Fr- Were you a Friday Javi Nooner guy or a Saturday guy? Javi's only on Friday. Well, it's sometimes they'll have makeup days for it on yeah, the Saturday. Yeah, I actually run the Javi Nooner Facebook page. Oh, <laughs> so, there it is. <laughs> got so, a, Friday got it is. 50,000 followers on there. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's the first Friday, official Friday of summer. Right. That's when Jobby Nooner is. And She's it, like it's June a good time 23rd, out there on Gull right. Island. Had some wonderful times on Gull Island. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, Jobby Nooner coming up. And, um, Pete, who's got the morning show? Is that you? Coded now, so when nobody gets confused. That oh, would but be I didn't. Me. But usually, last time I was here, you guys color coded it, but you didn't go by it. No, so are we, it's, this been, r- it's been updated color coded. Hey, hey, look at us. Look it up, Dave. <laughs> look at us. <laughs> Make it happen. Updated color coded. Look at you. That's right, the new morning show right here on Woodward Sports Network. You can start your day with us right here, 8 to 10 a.m., live right here on Woodward Sports. Join Kool-Aid, Flannel Sam, Broder, KG, and JB every morning as they cover all of Detroit sports talk, banter, and live fan interaction. All right here on Detroit's number one sports network, Woodward Sports. And we'll be right back. Every year, after a cold and dreary winter, Metro Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here, and we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows how. Broadcasting live from the biggest party, it's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans, starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party you don't want to miss with Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. It's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy. It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time to any Lady Jane's haircuts for men and claim your throne for a king's treatment from one of our talented stylists. Open seven days a week, walk in anytime. Just get to a Lady Jane's today and receive a precision haircut, scalp massage, hot lather neck shave, and a hot towel treatment. A haircut should not be a chore, it should be an experience. And that's exactly what Lady Jane's has to offer. Open seven days a week, walk-ins are always welcome. There's always a location near you. Lady Jane's haircuts for men, it's wicked awesome. And with the first pick in the 2024 media draft, Detroit selects Woodward Sports. Thank you for making us the number one digital network in Detroit. All right, QB Challenge. That is Shake Shack and Woodward Sports. You see the QR code right now. It's scanning and You know what you're scanning for? Well, the QB Challenge of Shake Shack is allowing you the chance to win two tickets to Detroit's home open. That's right. The Kings in the North, the Detroit Lions. You get a chance to go to opening game at the crib. All you got to do is scan, get in the contest, or go to wolversports.com, click the link, and you will be able to enter that way too. Or the best way, just go down to Shake Shack, get yourself a chicken shack, Shake Shack sandwich, say that two times fast, and then enter that contest. I don't know about you, but I would love to be at the Lions opener. This is how you do it. Scan the QR code now. 
too. It is. The quarterback challenge. And it's the chicken. You got to get the chicken sack sandwich, man. Well, you got to do that. So but, but Spencer brought it up. Like, it's not like we're qualifying you to enter this. It's the first 50 people that uh, click that QR code. You're getting in the contest. And, okay. And you're going to you're gonna get a throw to win those tickets. And it, it's pretty sweet. We're going to be uh, right there at the Shake Shack on Woodward downtown. Yeah, we're doing that. On yeah. the 19th. Yep. Uh, Armani and Edwards are going to be down there. So, you know, you could even throw a pass to the great Braylon Edwards if you're down in there. Hey, man. How much pressure on you when somebody does that, like not to drop it? Hey, it's <laughs> like it's no pressure and it's a lot of pressure at the same right, time. Because right. I've been doing it for so long. Like, I know I'm going to catch it. But the – every. <laughs> Once out of every hundred, you may drop it, and people are like ah, <laughs> you're like, and you gotta you gotta eat it. Pause. Like, you, you gotta you gotta, you, you gotta eat the joke. So uh, none well, but a lot. Well, I'll tell you who's catching everything. Those Detroit Tigers, baby, three and zero, baby, three and zero, three and zero. I mean, I, I think one of the biggest things every Tiger fan was worried about coming into this season is that that April, that March and April right. start. Man, if you. The last couple seasons, getting 10 games, 15 games under 500 before the season even starts, and we're in May already talking like, well, that was a fun season. At least this year, they started out with the crappy White Sox, and we'll admit a lot of it had to do with the team that they were playing, but I don't right. care. They're a division rival. They're on the schedule a bunch. You got to beat them a bunch. And you know what? Three wins to start off the season by one run only, yeah. too. Never been done in a sweep in Tigers history. In the hundreds of years yeah. that the Tigers have been around, this has never been done. And it, it was fun to watch Tigers baseball this weekend. Definitely fun to watch Tigers baseball. And it's crazy. They're doing a lot of never done before because on opening day, they won 1-0. to zero. That's the first time they had ever won 1-0 to zero on opening day in the rich history of the Detroit Tigers. Look, it doesn't matter who you play. You got to line them up. You still got to go out there and beat them. And like you said, they are a division rival. They basically are showing they can get it done anyway. You yep. want one run to zero, it's one to zero. You want us to score some runs, it's seven to six. You want us to build a game in the end where it's a couple runs scored, we're winning three to two. But it's the bullpen, and it starts off with Tarek Scoop. He came on the mound on Monday, uh, excuse me, on opening day, the twenty eighth, and he let us know what it was going to be. Eight strikeouts. I want to say he had three hits. One of those was a dribbler. He set the tone in the bullpen. Yep, they've been the catalyst for this Detroit Tiger team so far. Yeah, we knew pitching was going to be the strength of this team coming in the season. So it's good to see that actually come into fruition throughout the games. And uh, like you said, if you get to that bullpen, it's lights out. Like this kind of reminds me of the 2016 team. Ooh. Like okay. that, when when you knew Todd Jones was coming out yeah. and we had some flamethrowers of Zumaya back in like 08. Like those were fun days. 13 for, yeah. 13 and, for and you knew that when that, when if the if the Tigers could get it to a one run game going into the eighth and ninth, we had the setup men and we had the closers to get it done. And that's what you saw this weekend in Chicago. Uh, yeah, there's there's a picture of the pen right there. And look at these guys. Numbers. These guys just look like baseball players yeah, too. You got the mullet flowing down and everything. The Tigers bullpen in Chicago, 12.2 innings pitched, four hits, one run, 14 strikeouts. Now, by my math, that's greater than a strikeout per inning. And when you can get that, you can shut down innings to only be in two outs. You're doing yourself a favor, and it's. Yeah. The, the offense is what we're worried about, you know. Um, but Baez scoring the only run on the first game. How poetic is that? Uh, it's, <laughs> I it's, mean, it was great. He got himself on base, stole two bases, and he was able to get in, uh, get home to get the win. But also, you've been seeing consistent hitting. You see Parker Meadows has some hits. You see Torkelson. Big Torque's been hitting the ball pretty good. And even Javi Baez, you know, he had a hit the last game they won yesterday, and he had a hit like we talked about in yep. opening day. So. It's it's coming along just fine right now. That bullpen is great, and you just you just worry about the start of the season. That's all, and like you just said, that's all it's been for the Tigers at the start of the season. The last two years, they've been fighting tooth and nail and actually doing good in the second half of the yep. season. Last year, they made a surge and almost took over, but it's that start. They keep been getting put in those terrible starts. So starting off good, man. This could be the year. I predicted them to win, and that's one of the things I hate about baseball is like people just shrug off losses early in the season. Oh, you know, it's 162 games. Guess what? Yeah, this they, game they, counts they, they just as much as game 141, 142, 149. So losses are losses, and you yeah. can't get those games back. No. So for them to start off on this, I, I tweeted out this morning, man, if they keep bringing out the brooms and they have a nice winning record going into opening day on this Friday at home. It's going to be nuts. Downtown is going to be like a Lions playoff atmosphere. Like people are going to be feeling 
good. Normally you're feeling good because you're down there partying in the tent with us at the opera house and all that good stuff. You got to attend that. But not only that, now we get the little swag of we actually have a ball club. Yeah, typically, you know, like I think now you get excited in Detroit because you see what the Detroit Lions have done. The Detroit Lions have turned it around in three years. You get excited about what the Tigers can be. You get excited about the bullpen. You get excited about the hitters. Riley Green is back. Cole Keith. You're yep. excited about these young players. So now, like you said, you ride that momentum. Hell, we were excited about the Red Wings just three weeks ago. <laughs> Before that seven-game losing streak. Yeah, but, yeah. but it all seemed like Detroit, which a lot of people know is one of the best sports towns there is. I God. mean, one of the, it's, un, it's the most underrated for sure, but it's definitely one of the top ten, if not higher. You bringing that back? Oh, yep. man, it can get fun. April in the D may actually be a thing again. Oh, 100%. April in the D, you had the Tigers, you had the Red Wings, you had the Pistons at one point. Yeah, the Pistons are the only team that's lagging behind right now, yeah. right? And, you know, we're all disappointed in the Red Wings. Uh, I wanted them to make that Lions leap almost to the playoffs to almost to a championship. Yeah. Probably not going to. Still not out of the cards. Like, True. I'm not, they can I'm almost make the playoffs this year. On them. They yeah. still got a chance. But, yeah, uh, the Tigers clicking like this, it's just – you're right. This is one of the greatest sports cities in America. Yeah, it is. This is the only sports city where all four professional sports teams play within walking distance of each other. I mean, this the energy that happens when we have multiple teams clicking yeah. is unreal. I mean, you remember back in the day, you'd see yeah. Isaiah Thomas, you'd see Stevie Y at Pistons games. For as storied as the New Cecil York Fielder. Knicks, for the story as the New York Knicks are, yeah. the Detroit Pistons have more championships. Like just think about that. The, the nobody in New York has more Stanley Cups than the Red Wings, and then even the Detroit Tigers. Now we don't compare it to the others, you know. But hey, they even have three World Series. So it, it it we have chips. Yep. Just not a Super Bowl. Yeah, and we've never had all teams clicking at the same time, right? Like when it was April and the D Pistons, Red Wings, Tigers, and we'd have the Lions going like. 0-16. Oh, 0-16, oh, oh, right? <laughs> so there's always going to be that one redhead stepchild, but honestly. Right now, I think with the momentum of the Red Wings going into the next season, the momentum of the Lions going into the next season, and the Tigers starting off this way, there's a lot of hope. A lot of hopium going around it. I'm smoking a lot of it. What do the Lion excuse me, what do the Tigers need to be at the at the halfway point for you to think that they're gonna win the division? I mean five hundred ball is really all the this, Tigers this have division. to play to yeah. win the division this year. Five hundred ball. If they could be playing that, and right now they're three games over five hundred. Okay. So, I mean, they, they, they got a so good 41 shot to and get 41. there. 41 and 41. Or 40 and 40. 40 yeah, 40 and 40. Yeah, 40, yeah. 40, yeah, 40 and a half. 40 and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. At the 80-game mark, if they're 40 and 40, they are put themselves in a damn good position to win this division. Okay. I like it. Yeah, I, I, like it. I love it. I absolutely love it. And you know what else I love? Mike telling me about Planet Fitness. Ooh. Pete! Pete! <laughs> Pete, you just told the man. Right. You just told the man. <laughs> That's the only one I just noticed. You just told the man we had updated our this. system. Everything's good. But I'm you know sorry. what? Everything is updated and good at Planet Fitness where your fitness is essential. $10 a month is all they charge. They've been consistent about the price, but they've upgraded as well. Now they, they feature the squeaky, clean gym, the no judgment zone. Everybody wants to work out, but you want to work out at your own pace. Well, guess what? There's no judgment at Planet Fitness. And last but not least, they have the total... 30 minute body workout program. They got the machines lined up for you. All you got to do is follow the timer, follow the machine. Next thing you know, you're worked out. Planet Fitness, where your fitness is essential. Every year, after a cold and dreary winter, Metro Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here. And we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows how. Broadcasting live from the biggest party. It's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans. Starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party you don't want to miss with Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. At work and at home, we're there with smarter security solutions. Featuring complete automation with customized alerts and more. For over 90 years, we've been the company that's been counted on to protect what matters most, all with personalized service and care. Right now, for a limited time, receive a free video device plus free installation with a new home system. 
Guardian Alarm. We protect Michigan. Come to any Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men and claim your throne for a king's treatment from one of our talented stylists. Open seven days a week, walk in anytime. Just get to a Lady Jane's today and receive a precision haircut, scalp massage, hot lather neck shave, and a hot towel treatment. A haircut should not be a chore, it should be an experience. And that's exactly what Lady Jane's has to offer. Open seven days a week, walk-ins are always welcome. There's always a location near you. Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men, it's wicked awesome. Is that an octopus in your pants, or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> see what I did there? Go Red Wings! From Octopi Experts Woodward Sports. Rokies, you're driving around town, you see these signs popping up all over the place, and I love their logo. It's a chicken made out of a pizza. I mean, what's better than that? You got Canton, Farmington Hills... Hazlitt, Romulus, Royal Oak, South Lions, Sterling Heights, Taylor, Warren, Waterford, and Wixom, Sorokis, Crispy Chicken and Pizza, Sorokis and Woodward Sports. It's crispy. Uh, welcome back to Armani and Edwards with Maz right here on the Woodward Sports Network. My name is Stick, filling in for Ryan Armani. Today, he is on vacation all week along with Maz. I feel like Maz was just on vacation. Hey, look, man, don't get me started, man. <laughs> <laughs> don't, get, don't get me started, man. Like, uh, Maz a lot, lot of lonely days on this desk, man. Maz just came in with a nice tan like a week ago. Wasn't he in Jersey or so? What, where the hell was he? Florida, and he's back in Florida. What? He, he took he hey. took the youngest. So based on my knowledge, uh, the eldest, his eldest two daughters were able to go down to Florida for a concert and go down there and hang out a little bit. But for the, a concert? But the youngest couldn't go. So now he's taking the youngest, uh, Abby, so they can go down and hang out. In Fort Lauderdale, so she can get some sun. He's a great father. He's Maz a great father. is a great father. So, I, so, I, so, I, but I, we are I clearly him. paying Maz way too much money. <laughs> like, yeah. Dude is just—he's got a PJ going oh, yes. to Florida Weekly. The Maz Where's chair. I can, I can, I can definitely say that's not the case. <laughs> that's definitely not the case. Play along with it, Braylon. Come on. I, no, well, I was saying the PJ part. <laughs> oh, I was, I, was, I was like the money I was, thing. No, I was talking about the PJ part. We're overpaying him. Good I was lord. Like, he, he hanging out with Diddy. If you got the PJ, man. Oh. Oof. No Diddy. Yeah, no Diddy. No. Yeah, but Diddy. he's out though. How about, how about that Diddy? Thing? He's out. I think he kind of had to go like show face, right? Like he couldn't pull a Cam Sutton for a couple weeks and just be running. Well, true, but like you know, he he's, he uh, posted on Easter. He said, um, yep. you know, Happy Easter with he and his daughter. But then also, um, he was in Miami hanging out. Took a video when he was outside, maybe on South Beach. I think. I, I just don't know. What I, an awkward what, what's, situation. Man. It's all the all of that Hollywood and glitz and glass. It's just all weird. I mean, it's listen, all weird. sometimes I go down those rabbit holes yeah. of conspiracy Some tax theories. Is just different. And like some of the things, you know, like the Ellen set looking like uh, Epstein <laughs> Island or the Nickelodeon logo <laughs> is like an overhead shot of Epstein Island. Like, uh, you ever go down those rabbit holes, Braylon? Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. It, you yeah, do. This stuff's wild to me. I went down this Fraggle Rock, like. <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> what they were talking about, Down like why the show Rock. was created, but then I, I went down this one with uh, speaking of Nickelodeon, what was it, Rugrats? Oh, where yeah. it was going this dark rabbit hole of talking about Angelica was like she created like all the characters, so like Tommy and all like all these are like creative so people. It's oh, like man, in her that's head. A messed up theory. So Rugrats was just in her head. Yeah, one hundred percent. Like you saw that one too. Yeah, that's a messed up theory. Yeah, Basically, she was like schizophrenic or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I saw and it, man. It was manifestations like, of her mind. One hundred percent. It's like if you notice certain things about the kids, it's like they never really talked to their parents or something like that. It was, yeah. it was wild. It was, it was like kind of six cent stuff. So, hey, I, I go down those rabbit holes. Yeah. So. I'm sorry, I keep scratching my nose. My allergies are killing me right now. That's all right. It's all the right. season, man. You're all right. That's okay. So stop but, putting the camera on my face, Pete. <laughs> Especially time don't zoom in on my nose, Pete. Uh, yeah, the Diddy stuff is absolutely wild. Yeah, it's though. nuts. Because there's levels of truth. And there's also, you know, exaggeration. But if you're operating on that level, like if you're operating in that space, you got to keep it tight. Like You got to keep it tight. Yeah. You can't I, have slip ups. I just don't know what the hell to believe anymore. Like nothing's unbelievable. But also, nothing's believable. This is true. So I just sit here and I'm like, wait, no way, no way. And it's like, this keeps coming out. This okay, maybe. And then, nope. Okay, no. Like I, I just, yeah, I don't know. And I, I'm, I need, also, I need concrete evidence if you want me to buy in. I'm also shaping up to be the person that doesn't care anymore. Right. Like I think I subscribed to all this stuff maybe three years ago, four years ago, five years ago, six years. You're trying to 
figure out what's right, what's wrong, who's right, who's telling the truth, who should I listen to in the comments. But like three years ago, I just disconnected. I don't, at the end of the day, I don't even care. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't care. We talk about it for like social conversation, but I don't care. Yeah, the one thing I do care about though, my bracket, still going strong. I'm out. You're out? Well, I got UConn winning it all, but like even when when that happens, yeah, I don't have anything in the Final Four. I don't have, yeah, I'm out. So I just got UConn. What I'm excited for for the Final Four, NC State versus Purdue. The big man battle we've all dreamed of. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. NC State, last time they won a national championship, which was the year I was born, 1993, they were 11 seed. Down to seven seconds. You can see the time. Oh, look at Pete. Look at Pete. Jimmy V, Jimmy baby. V. Never give up. Never give up. Never give up. Look at him running around looking for somebody to hug. Anybody. Just somebody, it's anybody, anybody hug me. Also, I'm wondering, he's like, he's still trying to believe it's true. Like moment, like there was right. no way. Like they beat you, the team. They beat. Yeah, I know you young people out there don't know. They beat Clyde Drexler and Akeem Olajuwon was Clyde on that Clyde. Houston team. They were the best team in the country, and they weren't even the best two players on the team. Their point guard was the best player. I can't think of his name, but I saw that thirty for thirty flash slam jammer. That's the team they beat as an eleven seed. So shoot, if you want it bad enough, what's crazy about NC State and the run that they made is they they were down six points in their conference championship game. With 48 seconds left, they hit a buzzer beating three to send yeah. it to overtime. Then they win their conference, get gifted their, their 11 seed because yeah. they kind of backed into it, right? True. Then they, they win, but the Oakland game, they barely beat Oakland. They, they have to go to scared. overtime to beat Oakland, the team from Rochester. So let's know how good Oakland is. That's, that's where I was going with this. Yeah. I think we owe Oakland a little bit more respect with what they had to overcome and what they accomplished this year. I mean, we have all tipped our cap to them, but how far NC State has yeah. gone shows you how really good Oakland was. It also tells you, like, what the tournament is about now. Like, now with the best players not going to college, with them going to overtime or going to the G League, if you will, for a year, like, teams that stay together for three, four, five years, man, like St. Pete's two years ago, that's how Oakland's so good. Like, Oakland has you know, four or five guys on the team yeah. in the fifth year they have senior. a team. They have a team, and they know how to win System. as a team. And that's why I picked them to actually go to the second round, third round of the tournament in my bracket. But uh, it, it's fun to watch. Oakland must get a lot more credit. Uh, oh, the no. matchup that I want to talk about, though, DJ versus Edie. I mean, you got, let's call him Baby Shaq and DJ. Zach Randall. It's just it, maybe Zach Randall. I mean, yeah. The guy is just big, but he uses his body. He pushes off a lot, he, you know. And then you have Edie, who just makes everybody look like midgets on the court. Like it, it literally looked like an optical illusion when he was playing yesterday. When you had yeah. Foster, when you had the lawyer kids standing next to him, and it's just like these six foot guys yeah. next to a seven foot four giant. Yeah. But I'm really interested. We don't get big men matchups anymore. I. I'm old school basketball. I love the big men matchups. And you don't get that anymore outside of college, really. Yeah. But, you know, you get the big men matchups in the NBA, but it's they're more athletic big men. They're not back to the basket, square up, on the block yeah. big men like they You're used to You're not getting Shaq and Arvidas and bonus. No. No, no. You're getting 100%. Giannis who's driving from 80 feet away, right? This, this is true. Who's taking four steps to get from baseline to baseline. But the thing that's also interesting about these two, t these two guys, they're in shape. Hey, right. They're both in shape for big man. Like you look at Edie. Edie plays a lot of minutes. He plays the most minutes on that team at seven four. So you gotta give him a lot of credit for that. And then the big man from North Carolina State. Like he is no joke. Doesn't EJ. take a lot. It's gonna be a lot of fun watching those guys get after it, man. Edie's taller, but I think the big fella's got some physicality and he can pass. Well, and we know low man wins in those situations a lot, right? Like yeah. if you can get low and get that leverage pushing up on him, I think DJ is probably the only guy in this tournament that has enough strength to be able to contain Edie a little bit. Stick does love big men. No pause. <laughs> no pause, baby. Give me the big men all day long. <laughs> Yeah, he's on his own with that one. That's wild. <laughs> you wild. See, did you see that video uh, floating around the internet of Edie going into a dorm room with a chick? Oh, no. I did not. Oh, God. Oh, I, no, Pete, if you can find that tweet. Oh, wait it's a minute. It's so funny because the girl's maybe like 5'6". He, and it, Edie's 7'4". He's like ducking away. And it just looks like he's escorting some young lady, consenting young lady, into that room where God knows what's going to happen besides her getting destroyed. Like... Remember when Shaq used to take pictures with like hoops when he was dating hoops? Oh, they used to have parties at Clutch Cargos. Yeah. Hoopsie, yeah. yeah and you would that. see just like how just the discrepancy in I, size. I don't physics. I just need to know the physics of this. 
How does a dude that big? Uh, 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 this is, this, women this women can stretch in ways that I didn't Ch know. Children's show, Fox 2. We apologize for that. We no, apologize. listen. The it's Fox 2. How do you think the children got here? But Fox 2 is not up for them to decide. <laughs> Neither is it up for us to tell people. <laughs> So yeah, but you're right. If if you see that if you see that footage, it, it's really hilarious of him entering that room. But yeah, that's the, that's the matchup I'm looking forward to in this final four. That that's the main matchup I'm looking forward to in this final four. Yeah. Uh the other teams, the other games. I mean, UConn just looks unbelievable. They look unbeatable. They are unbeatable, and you know what's name had a shot. Uh, and uh, what was who did they play? They were they stayed with him uh, to the half, and then at halftime they came on. They just blew him away. Illinois, it was Illinois tried to stay with him. Tried second yeah. half, man. They blew the doors open. But that kid Nelson from Alabama, he's been killing it. Kid Nelson's been playing some basketball. I mean, we had a chance to watch him Friday and Sunday. Like, boy, it's bad. I'm interested to see what he's gonna do. I mean, I know he's not gonna do anything in the NBA, but college basketball in this tournament, he's been he's letting it fly. El Gato putting this in the chat. I don't like Purdue, I, and they're Purdue don't. And, Until they're not. But here's what I like about Purdue, right? And sometimes sports, you need that ultimate failure to get the hunger, to get the ultimate championship. Right. And Purdue getting knocked out in the first round last year, I think has made them a much better team this year. And two years ago, they lost to a 14 seed. Yeah. So I think that projects on them to be a better team because sometimes you got to take that big L to learn how to succeed in those situations and take every round serious. You're right. We're waiting for the UVA again. UVA was the number one seed for three, four years in a row. They got put out as the number one seed by 16, obviously. And, you know, you look for them, and then the year they get put out, the following year, UVA finally wins the national championship. So it's a much better story. So uh, we'll see. They have an opportunity, but – like I said, until they do, they're Purdue. Do you like watching Purdue play basketball with ED? Because the way they play, it is a boring ass game. I got to put money on the line to watch it. Yeah, like like to watch yeah. Purdue, like I got to put some money on it. I actually just missed. I mean, what did my ED Purdue. score yesterday? Like twenty six. No, he had in the thirty. He had oh, 38, 30. 38, I believe. But at one point, I think he scored sixteen other points in a row. Like it was yeah, just, just like throw the ball up, just a cheat code, it. right? Just throw it to the seven four guy and let him go to work. Also, it's smart. He gets guys in free. He gets the team in uh, in foul trouble, and he shoots free throws well. So you look at it from that. It's almost it's a, a recipe for uh, unbeatableness. Yeah, which it, is a word I just coined. I like it. We need that on a t-shirt. You know what else we need on t-shirts? Pete, tell us about those merch items that we got at Woodward Sports, if this graphic is right. Well, yeah, I wish the Red Wings were doing better because that LFGRW hoodie looks absolutely spectacular. But you can go to shop.woodwardsports.com right now. And if you are tired of wearing the same old Detroit sports merch, we have a brand new lineup. Brad Holmes, Guy, Woodward, Lions. Come on, guys. Check out these wonderful the hoodies, the tees, and the hats that are guaranteed to turn heads. Go right now to shop.woodwardsports.com and and load up. We'll be right back. Every year after a cold and dreary winter, Metro Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here. And we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows how. Broadcasting live from the biggest party. It's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans. Starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party you don't want to miss with Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. To any Lady Jane's haircuts for men and claim your throne for a king's treatment from one of our talented stylists. Open seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Just get to a Lady Jane's today and receive a precision haircut, scalp massage, hot lather neck shave, and a hot towel treatment. A haircut should not be a chore. It should be an experience. And that's exactly what Lady Jane's has to offer. Open seven days a week. Walk-ins are always welcome. There's always a location near you. Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men, it's wicked awesome. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel anytime. 
Is that an octopus in your pants, or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> see what I did there? Go Red Wings! From Octopi Experts Woodward Sports. James, I just got my hair cut today, actually. I was looking like a shaggy mess. Now I'm looking as best as I can, okay? I'm, this is what I got to work with. Bethany did her thing, and you can come in and get treated like a king. Walk in anytime. Precision haircuts. Lady Janes, I got them all over Metro Detroit, and they are wicked awesome. Welcome back to Armani and Edwards with Maz. My name is Stick, filling in for Ryan Armani. Maz is out. We have Mike in the sound booth. Of course, Mr. Pete in the TD booth. Braylon is on the desk with me. Pete, you just got some breaking news about Rashi Rice. Yeah, uh, according to reports, the... Uh the president of the Kansas City Chiefs has come out with a statement, and he says that in regards to the recent events surrounding Rasheed Rice, the Chiefs say they will react accordingly based on facts they discover. So more, you know, stay tuned, basically. Oh, yeah, that's pretty much uh, that's just corporate talk for we, ain't, we don't know a damn thing. <laughs> like, <laughs> we got the video, we've seen what you've seen, but we cannot make any judgment. That's pretty crazy that he just walked away, man. I mean, that's just like, what are you doing, dude? I... But to Braylon's point, you're better off doing that, especially if there was weed or you were drinking. Yeah. I mean, because that's that's career ending as opposed to career suspension, yeah, right? Right, exactly. You know, oh, you did something stupid, we're going to slap you on the wrist. Oh, you were intoxicated while doing it? Okay, then we're taking a year or two off that. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, obviously Rasheed Rice had a wonderful season uh, this past year, so it's like, you know, come on, boy. You got to get you gotta get going, dude. Yeah, that's, that's what puts – the Chiefs in a very interesting position because if he was, let's just say Sky Moore, right? If he was Sky Moore, maybe third wide receiver, fourth wide receiver on their roster, this is, it's a little easier to let him go. But when Rashi Rice is literally the only guy who produced for you, it may sway your decision about how short of a leash you're going to have with this guy. And you may give him a little longer one to work with because He's kind of our best option on offense. Still a business. AD James and Birmingham Rose. I was able to get some allergy meds, so ah, I feel yeah. much better now. Why is it like a placebo? It all like worked instantly. But anyway, <laughs> uh, talking about the Rashi Rice situation. Look, he won't be the first guy to left to flee the scene of a crime. Or flee, technically, is a flee the scene of a crash. Lance Briggs did that when he played for the Chicago Bears. Now, obviously, he's uh, Pro Bowl talent. But it's the same thing, and that's why I go back to even though he left, him leaving is going to help him out because he won't have the blood alcohol content level. He'll have to deal with the fines and things like that. But and money ain't a thing. Exactly. Like, you think he cares about money? But also, it's not about him caring. It's about the Kansas City Chiefs. Right. Because when they're looking at a situation and it's probation and it's a fine, it's much different. You keep him on the team, but now you have that conversation with him where that was strikes one and two. Like There is no strike two. Like, there's strikes one and two. Next situation that you have, next thing that you do, you're gone. But I think it, it sucks that he left, but in this situation, it's going to help him. Kansas City Chiefs, the, He's the, past best like, out. In the past like five to six years, they've had some odd stories that Juju have happened Smith out of that Schuster. organization. Juju Smith oh, you're talking Kareem about Hunt. like... Oh, Kareem. Remember they had a player drive the in the parking lot and kill himself the in, in their parking lot? Yeah, because he beat his girlfriend. Yeah. And then, yeah. So the a, Kansas City Chiefs, I mean, they, they should be well-versed on how to deal with these types of situations. Um, but you saw even with the Kareem Hunt incident, it took to that video surface before they did anything to Kareem Hunt. Like It was reported. There was you know, pr file, or charges pressed. But they didn't do a damn thing until you saw that video. I'm going to tell you like this. At the end of the day, NFL franchises, whatever you want to say about them, they are going to keep players until they have to get rid of them. right like they're going to keep them for championship reasons this player helps us it gives us the best opportunity to win a super bowl to win a playoff game etc they're going to keep them until it's something released or something comes out that they just have to move on the detroit lions like if we didn't know what the cam situation was and it was some hearsay and some back and forth they're going to wait until you see what happened well in this case we found out it was strangulation right out the gate and he was on the run it's time to move on from him but if it's, you know, you look at, uh, I talked about, you look at the Aaron Andrews situation. You talked about the Kareem Hunt, how long they waited right. on that one. You wait until you get the information. The Baltimore Ravens knew about what happened at the casino with Ray Rice before it came out to the public. They already knew what happened. The NFL already knew, but they didn't say anything right. until the state prosecutor went back 
and open the case and now they open up and release the video now everybody has to oh we don't know what happened oh well we're going to move on that's uh, the thing the video, the video evidence expedites everything right it's it, hearsay until you get that exactly and there's no arguing what you see either right no, there, you there's can't absolutely that. no arguing when you see it on, when you see that corvette sideswipe a minivan you can't and the dude get out and walk away you can't say that wasn't me like you yeah, can't. Was, hey, Bray, here's the update of the story. That's why we brought it back up again. It was twin, brother. In regards to the incident, the recent events surrounding Rashi Rice, the Chiefs say they will react accordingly based on the facts that they discover. <sighs> Says the President Mark Donovan, in all these situations, you have to wait until you have all the facts. And frankly, we don't have any of the facts at this point. We will get to the bottom of it. Right. We'll get our facts together and react accordingly. And, that's, and it's literally... What we're talking about. Coach speak, baby. You, you got to say that. We'll, Coach speak, though. We'll react to the fact that, you know, blah, blah, blah. Right, right. Yeah. Well, we're, we're finding out more just as everybody else. Boy, the uh, Hollywood Brown draft status for next fantasy football season has gone through the roof now, baby. There you go. There you go. Ooh, good Hollywood. call. Yep. I, I think the Chiefs are off focusing on offense anymore, though. They're like, all right, we're a defensive team, and we got Patrick Mahomes that's going to cover all the gaps on offense. <laughs> it worked for them this year. Uh, but what needs to work for the Detroit Lions, that kicking game. And you, Oh, man. You see what happened the in the UFL. Panthers? Yeah. Yeah. Where's Maz when you need him? That's right, baby. Uh, if you didn't see it uh, over the weekend, a uh, kid from the UFL won a yeah. game 64-yard field goal. The, the best thing about it, the best thing about it is they iced him. He made the field goal right down the middle. The first time they iced him, they called timeout. Stick. He lines up and does it again the very next play. And you're talking about a guy that he didn't even kick field goals in college because he backed up two good uh, field goal kickers at two different schools that he went to. So he was mainly a kickoff <laughs> kicker. And now he's showing you what he can do. Lions better reach out to this guy. <laughs> Jake Bates is his name. And, yeah, it, it appears that Dan Campbell saw it. The Lions are interested, according to all reports. And yeah. why wouldn't you be? I mean, you see a guy knock home a 64-yarder in oh, by your the way. house. Yep. I was like, about to yeah. say, how could they not see it? It was yeah. in their house. Uh, okay, this guy can do it for us. And, honestly, uh, I'm all for it. If it, it. The one – Weakness with the Lions this year, and we saw it play out in the NFC Championship yeah. game, was they didn't trust their kicker. Not that nope. he couldn't get the job done. Last couple years. They man. just didn't trust him to get the job done. And if you had a guy that could shorten your field like that, knowing every time we reach, reach the 35-yard line, we're pretty much guaranteed three points. And so that's yeah. that's our goal. If we reach the 35-yard line, guaranteed our three, three points. Everything after that, gravy. If we had that weapon in the arsenal for the Detroit Lions – that is such a huge part because offense, defense is important. Yeah. Special teams is the third leg of football. And a lot of teams try to ignore that fact, but special teams are almost just as important as offense and defense. Third leg, I like that, pun intended. But <laughs> also, too, when you look at it, the guy can do it. Like, Stick, you're talking about doing it in front of fans, in front of noise, in front of the opposition, and then having a timeout call and nailing it, then lining up yep. shortly later and doing it exact same thing again in the game for the win. That means a guy can do it. That means a guy is clutch. That means it's like water. So definitely need to give him. Like, as soon as this Michigan Panthers season is over, need to bring him in for training camp, man, and see how his leg really looks. Well, that's kind of what you like about Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes, too. I mean, they pulled that Matthew guy out of the CFL, the sack leader in the CFL. So, I mean, they're, they're looking everywhere. These guys aren't just sitting back with their feet up like, oh, we did well this last season. They're still scouring the earth to players that can add to this team and add to the culture and if you got a guy banging home 64-yard field goals, come to Papa, baby. Yeah. We need you here. You ain't lying. I ain't showed you what he could do. Said enough. Go get him, Dan. <laughs> uh, Pete, you got Premier Pet Supply? No, that would be uh, Mike making his debut Ooh. doing a live read. Tell, show him how it's done, Mike. Ooh. Oh, wait. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Okay. Off to a good start. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> um... Premier Pet, give your pet the best. Premier Pet Supply is hands down Michigan's best pet pet store. Same prices that all of, same prices and all the conveniences that the online big box retailers have. Oh yeah. With one major difference, family and locally owned and operated for 30 years. Over 60 brands of pet food with nutrition for your pet. Same day, local, curbside and home delivery. Pet Supply. Premier Pet Supplies, give your pets the press. Best. Ooh, I'm sorry. Right, www. 
premierpetsupply.com. Mike! Gonna, uh, Mike, that's your yeah! first one. Not bad, right, not Mike. bad. <laughs> yeah! I might suggest reading the scripts before we go live. Um, yeah. But yeah, other than that, that you're only going to get better, bro. Like, listen, yeah. one of my favorite quotes in media, if you're not embarrassed by your first attempt, right. you waited too long. Right. So, good job, Mike. <laughs> Appreciate you. And we'll be right back. Every year, after a cold and dreary winter, Metro Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here. And we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows how. Broadcasting live from the biggest party. It's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans. Starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party you don't want to miss with Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. The most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel anytime. Come to any Lady Jane's haircuts for men and claim your throne for a king's treatment from one of our talented stylists. Open seven days a week, walk in anytime. Just get to a Lady Jane's today and receive a precision haircut, scalp massage, hot lather neck shave, and a hot towel treatment. A haircut should not be a chore, it should be an experience. And that's exactly what Lady Jane's has to offer. Open seven days a week, walk-ins are always welcome. There's always a location near you. Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men, it's wicked awesome. Is that an octopus in your pants, or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> see what I did there? Go Red Wings! From Octopi Experts Woodward Sports. All right. Well, I do have some good news and some bad news. The bad news is insurance rates are going up across the board in Michigan. The good news is that Swiss Insurance is here to help. Right now, it's critical for you to have your insurance reviewed. Call Mark at Swiss Insurance today or visit SwissINS.com and tell them that Woodward Sports sent you. Hey, Bray, I need a new car. What happens when you run a great business for over 50 years? You know what? You expand and you offer more products to the people. This is exactly what Les Stanford did by adding Les Stanford Buick GMC, the same great service that customers have come to know and trust on what we're just south of Nine Mile. Check out Les Stanford in Dearborn as well at lesstanford.com. Lesstanford.com. Together. Let's drive. Let's drive. Let's drive. Let's get Welcome it. Welcome back to Armani and Edwards with Maz right here on the Woodward Sports Network. My name is Stick. Filling in for Ryan Armani today. He is on vacation. So is Maz. Maz is Maz is just gonna wind up in Florida. Like Maz is a Florida retiree yeah, already. He is. He's like the Costanzas, the, the Costanzas parents. Right? I hope he can make. Phase three. Yeah, well, that, that's exactly what I see Maz with the Hawaiian shirt. Like <laughs> He does look like a, a Hawaiian shirt, Tommy Bahama guy. Oh, Mass is a total Tommy Bahama yeah. guy. I might give him a Tommy Bahama shirt for uh, for, for summer. <laughs> Getting him ready for summer. You know when the Hawaiian shirts were hot in the late 90s, Maz was all over that. 100%. He all definitely All over was. it. I don't know, though, because he wears so much sports gear. Like I feel like that would cut into his... his uh... It was like the ones with the Cubs logo on it, though. Oh. <laughs> you know, you've seen those Hawaiian yeah, they had shirts. Got, yeah, they had like... Uh, like middle-aged white man in the choco. Yeah, for oh, a yeah. long time. And that's right. that's Mass, middle-aged white man. <laughs> He's past tan man age. now with how much time he spends in Florida, though. But thank you guys for being a part of the show today. Thank you to everybody in the chat. We appreciate you. People talking about uh, Mike and his live read over there, and you know I, I love it that people brought up fish. People brought up flannel Sam, and like, hey, Those first ones. Their first ones. It's it's tough to get it out of the way. And this remember is, JB's first one. Oh uh, uh, man, JB, JB's first one was great. Shout out to JB. I missed that guy, man. But uh, first time you ever cracked a mic, right? Because yeah, you, you after your pro, you you went and did some work for Big Ten Network and stuff like that. True, you, but I had worked before that though. Like I, I, yeah, I took classes at Michigan. Okay, uh, yeah, and I did some stuff in high school too. My dad, like he was always kind of like around the media, so I was able to kind of see early on. But it, I'm not gonna lie, like it, even now to this day, if I'm going to speak somewhere, going, you get nervous for that before you open your mouth. Like I still pause. I still. <laughs> that's double pause. Double pause. I still get open. Like when I go speak to kids, it goes. Yeah. See, see, I have to bring it back to shut everybody up. When I go speak to kids, 
when I read to needy children. When I read to when I read to the homeless, nah, but like when I help people out or I go on stage and do that, you're still nervous until you kind of start your spill. And then it, yeah, the number it one fear in the entire world is public speaking. Public speaking, yeah. The number one fear, not sharks. Not being burnt yeah. to death, not suffocation, not driving off a bridge, not airplane. Talking in front of people is the number one fear in the world. Yeah. It's always astounded me because I, I'm with you. I, I don't look at it as nervous. I look at it as excited, right? right. But I, exactly. I get those sweaty palms. Yeah. I get, but it's a it's a good it's part energy. Of nerves, it, you yeah. know, like when I was working for radio stations and we you know throw a big show at the Joe and you have to go in front of fifteen thousand people on the mic live and introduce. You know, Big Sean or Kendrick yeah. or J. Cole or something like that. You got those nerves, and that's part of the. It's part of what bites you, though, when you become part of the media is that thrill, that rush of being able to crack a mic and say something. So, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll play you some of my. We call them air checks in radio. But I'll play you some of my first air checks, and it's me like talking up a Samantha Mumba song from you know 2001, and it just crushing the vocals Samantha stumbling Mom. over my words and yeah so so mike just know you are going to be smooth as butter by the time this is over and you will think back to your first live read and be like man that was fun <laughs> most definitely <laughs> said most silent definitely. mike <laughs> yeah man of, man of many words man of few words um uh, but yeah you guys want to get to around the nfl do it let's up. do it let's put this together Around the NFL, Braylon, I'm going to throw these topics off you and get your response. And I love this first one that you, that you put on here. Uh, Green Bay Packers head coach Matt LaFleur. It's amazing to me how much head coaches aren't aware of what their GMs are doing sometime. Because he was caught off guard by Aaron Jones being released. He said it just happened really fast on that Monday. and It, it happened really fast. So I don't know all the details of that. I'm not involved in those types of conversations. Are you shocked that they wouldn't let a Matt LaFleur know that they're changing his backfield on him? Uh, absolutely not. Absolutely okay. not. This happens a lot in the NFL, man. You see uh, in terms of Robert Sala. I mean, usually with guys like Matt LaFleur, mm -hmm. guys that are in the know, they seem to be the you know the catalyst for to run their teams. Definitely seems like the guy is in control out there in Green Bay. But may not be the case. You see it with Robert Sala. Like, he didn't know a lot in terms of who the Jets were even drafting, talking about Zach Wilson or moves they're going to make. So I think you see it, but I think I agree with him. I'm surprised, too. You look at Aaron Jones. I was trying to pull his stats up just for – Oh, he was there everything. Yeah, but the last seven games of the season, including the playoffs, he was the best running back in terms of statistically. <laughs> like, And he's also – the only thing I can think of is a money situation in terms of his injury. Aaron Jones is never available. Ability, availability is yep. the best ability. You and Ryan said all the time, so maybe that had to be it. But in terms of outside of that, I was confused too because Aaron Jones just seemed like the prototypical running back for Matt Lafleur's offense. And the fact that Matt Lafleur is an offensive guy sounds a little, little crazy that they didn't run it by him. And to put it in a division rival, like, yeah. hey, not only are we trading this guy away. They could have gone to Lafleur. How are we going to defend this guy when we play him? What do you think about that end of it too? Because that's a, you're going to play him twice a year now. The only thing that, for their sake, I can say in which, all right, well, at least they did this move. They did bring Josh Jacobs from the uh, Las Vegas Raiders, another guy that has high end, high motor, runs th runs through the tackles. Better than Aaron Jones and catches outside the back. I was going to say, so. probably a better receiving running back, too, than Aaron Jones, but it's not like Aaron Jones was bad at it. Aaron can catch. No, Aaron's a good receiving right. running back. I just think uh, Josh Jacobs runs a little bit more between the tackles, and I think for them, you want to start uh, slowing some of those drives down. You want to start taking some of the chunks out of the clock. And I think right now they're a pass-happy offense, and they pass out of the backfield a lot, too. So maybe they want to run between those tackles because you, you're going to play some of those cold-weather games with a run game. It matters. Well, it's good to see. Josh Jacobs never really played in cold weather. You know, he, he went straight Alabama, from Alabama to Vegas. Al <laughs> like, that's true. Alabama gets cold, but I guess not by not the time Michigan college cold. football not, season. Not frozen tundra cold. Hey, man, look. And last time he had an Alabama running back, it didn't work out so well. Eddie Lacy. It worked for, well for one year. One then the year. Dude got fat as hell. Like, <laughs> he was eating too much of whatever they're selling out there in Green Lots Bay. Lots of cheese. Lots Ooh. of cheese will do that to you. The next topic, Weird. by the way, Bray put in the chat. So Bray would know more about the next topic. We're we talking the Steelers one or Tom yes, Brady? Yes, the Steelers okay, one. Okay, yeah. former Steelers safety Mike Mitchell on soft NFL hitting rules from back in the mid-2010s. And we're not doing that. I feel like I got to ask a guy, hey, are you ready for me to hit you right now before I hit you? And that's crazy. 
I'm going to mess around and get hurt trying to protect an offensive player because he's running an over route. <laughs> your quarterback shouldn't have threw that ball messed up. That happened two years ago. That's not, I'm, I'm not joking at all. Andy Dalton threw a ball to Tyler Eifert two years ago. Tyler Eifert had to die for it. I was aiming for his gut. But if he don't die, if he don't get in the head, that's 50 grand out of my pocket, though, because Andy throws a bad ball. Make that make sense. And at first you're taking our money, but now, you know, I got like Matt Hasselbeck calling me a dirty player and trying my character, and we've never met before. Yeah, and look, and, and we had this conversation, Ryan and I did last week, and I told him, look, I'm just because I played offense, just because I played wide receiver, that doesn't mean I'm always in favor of the rules that are helping offensive players. And I thought this was, you know, like when this started happening, it's going to turn into a two-hand touch. I think he's right. You know, you grew up a certain way, you know, especially back then. You grew up in Little League in high school and yep. college being taught to hit and react a certain way. You got in the NFL and you were taught that for a while, and then they tried to de-teach that as people are moving at maximum velocity. And I think it's it's tough, and he's absolutely right. He was absolutely right then. $50,000 is a heavy fine considering it's an opinion. It's an opinionated uh, rule, ruling on the field. Was he defenseless or not? And now it's gotten even worse. This was years ago, and now you're seeing, you're seeing it, it still come to now where can they even tackle? Or I, like the swivel. I, I was a fan of the drop hip. I was a fan of how, how else do you shift momentum against a guy running full speed? I was get, speed. getting rid of it. Like, I, I'm you happy are? They, yeah, I, I'm happy they got rid of that one. But – in terms of other things, and right. you know, like when a guy is going to attack you like this, and then a sudden thing makes a guy do that, is it's just a tough space to navigate as a defensive player. Well, what else is tough is like Kirby Joseph. He's getting labeled as a dirty player, right? But he's going by the rules. I gotta hit you in your knees because I'm not allowed to go up high, and I gotta take you out somehow. And to bring up the point there, you know, the quarterbacks are a lot of fault at this time for putting your receiver in a vulnerable position. So yeah. I. I agree. It's just getting harder and harder to become a defensive player in the NFL. And eventually, I think it will evolve into a flag football type situation. It's definitely going to evolve. But one thing that didn't help the Detroit Lions is when I look, and I love Amon Ross St. Brown. We love him on the show. We appreciate what he's done the first three years. He's been amazing in his career. One of the best of all time, statistically. But with that said, when he got on his podcast with his brother, Equiminius and Justin Fields, and they got to talking about that. He said that Dan Campbell said in a team meeting that, hey, you know, when they're one yard out of bounds, you still hit them. When you say things like that and it comes out when you say things like that and they're calling your team a dirty team, those things start to go together. So, like, I don't mind how they play, but you just can't release information like that when you're doing podcasts. We got to remember, what, where's Dan Campbell's uh, coaching <coughs> tree coming from? Oh, Sean Payton. And, and, and what's Sean Parcells. Payton famous for? Bounty Gate, Greg Williams. <laughs> so <laughs> let's not pretend these are choir boys saying, oh, don't hurt the other team. It's, you hush no. your mouth. You hush your mouth. Put them about down. And I love that on a Dan Campbell. Give you me that kneecap. Give me that kneecap. Uh, Tom Brady's main competition. Drum roll. Yeah. Was, he says, Michael Jordan. All right. We have Julian Edelman on this. It's like 2014, the offseason. Me and Brady are training in L.A. at his gym, and he has he has the location of where the Super Bowl is on his whiteboard wow. in his home gym. Wow. And it's like March. And I'm like, what is that? He's like, oh, that's where we're going to go play the last game. I go... We're gonna we're gonna get you to to pass Joe, bro. We're gonna get you to pass Joe Montana because of four, you know, four yeah. Super Bowls. He goes, he looks at me with like that golden stare of those sizzling steel blue eyes with a very tight chin, and says, yeah. "I'm not going for Montana. <laughs> I'm going for Jordan." Wow. <laughs> the time's always been different, you know, and, and once you get to a level where you see the success that you had, he had three out the gate, you know, yep. he had three within four years or three within five years, your sights get set higher, your sights get set to something else, something that hasn't been done. So I absolutely believe him because he never mentioned Joe Montana. Like if we, And he's a guy that's from that area. He's a 49er fan yep. growing up. But if you remember his interviews or if you ever paid attention, never did he mention Joe Montana at any point during the first three, four five to six everyone views michael jordan as the goat across all sports like even with wayne gretzky and i know his numbers the great one the great one his numbers will never be broken you look at the distance between his goals and say it's it or his total points and next you it's enough distance to be number one but with that said 
Jordan is considered arguably the GOAT in every sport. If yep. you just look at it like they were the best athlete of dominant. all time. Yeah, dominant. The most yep. best athlete of all time. So I think that makes sense that he makes this comment because he was close then and, and now he has seven championships for two different teams. So, <sighs> Ouch. Unbelievable career. <laughs> and absolutely un and the best Sizzling part, steel my blue eyes. <laughs> favorite part. Yeah, that that's pretty amazing yeah. too. But my favorite part about Tom Brady's career is just how he owns the entire country. Right? Yeah. Grew up in California. It's true. Owned it out there. Came to the Midwest with Michigan. People love him in the Midwest. Yeah. Went to the East Coast with Boston. Owns Boston. Yeah, he then owns. he just decided to go to Florida and I'll take over this region too. Like the guy literally owns every part of this country. Like he's the loved everywhere. The only one place that he's not loved and the only one place he does not own. New York. That is New York. <laughs> <laughs> that is New York. That is true. However you want to slice it. He don't know New York. Uh, yeah, I was watching something with Brady, and he was just talking about losing and stuff like that and how you need the – he was talking about, it like, a dude caught his ball off his helmet. Yeah. He's like, just things happen like that. It's it's so funny how he's come to terms with that moment, and he's still talking about Ty, David Tyree catching the ball off his helmet. He's like, with the defender, he still doesn't believe that play happened. He still talks about it in this regard. He said he'll give up two Super Bowl wins. For that just the one. Yeah, yeah, for the uh, undefeated one. Yeah. He said he'll give up two rings and stay at six just to have that one. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Well, let's take a break, and we'll get to more of around the NFL. There's some great things on this list, including who the Vikings are going to be going after. A little Tua talk, some New York Jets, which I know you will find interesting. Ooh. But we will do that. And uh, first, let's talk about Guardian Alarm, Mr. Pete. That's right. What happens when you see that black and yellow sign black out in front of your house? It tells the bad guys, and especially me, one thing. Stay yeah. out. That's right. It's a new year. Let Guardian Alarm offer you customized solutions from real experts, 24-7 professional monitoring, and technology backed by people. Your safety and security deserves technology that's been proven to work and by people who have been proven to care. Call 1-800. Stay, Stay out. 1-800. Stay, Stay out. out. That's right. Call him today and tell him Woodward Sports sent you. We'll be right back. Every year after a cold and dreary winter, Metro Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here. And we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows how. Broadcasting live from the biggest party. It's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans. Starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party don't want to miss with Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. Stop searching for a vehicle and start finding one. Les Stanford Chevrolet Cadillac makes it easy. We harness the power of multiple dealerships and own the biggest selection of GM brands in the area to get you the car you need. With the Les Stanford Group, you'll have access to four different dealerships, providing you with more makes, more models, and more choices. We're connected to more than 1,000 vehicles. And with so many high-quality CPO vehicles available, you'll find new car quality at pre-owned prices. You can start and end your search at lessstanford.com today. Any Lady Jane's haircuts for men and claim your throne for a king's treatment from one of our talented stylists. Open seven days a week, walk in anytime. Just get to a Lady Jane's today and receive a precision haircut, scalp massage, hot lather neck shave, and a hot towel treatment. A haircut should not be a chore, it should be an experience. And that's exactly what Lady Jane's has to offer. Open seven days a week. Walk-ins are always welcome. There's always a location near you. Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men, it's wicked awesome. And with the first pick in the 2024 media draft, Detroit selects Woodward Sports. Thank you for making us the number one digital network in Detroit. Yo, QB Challenge, win two tickets with Shake Shack and Woodward Sports. All you got to do is scan the QR code right now. And this QB Challenge, you know what this is for? It's for opening day to the Detroit Lions season over. This coming season, 2024, the Kings in the North, you get a chance by going to Shake Shack. While you're there, make sure you grab the Chicken Shack sandwich. It is amazing. If you can't scan the QR code right now, just go to WoodwardSports.com when you get a chance. Click the link, and you can do it that way. Or, like I said, go get that Chicken Shack sandwich, and you can go in public. Uh, you can go in person. QB Challenge, win two tickets, the Detroit home opener. Scan the QR code. Now, I'm telling you like this, Woolworth Sports and Chicken Shack, uh, Shake Shack, we do it best. 
Shake, shake. Shake, shake. I can't wait for that quarterback challenge. Shake, shake. Pete, I'm sending you something in the Slack if you want to pull it up. Uh, over the weekend, I was able to call, uh, do some color commentary on the high school boys. Okay. Uh, okay. All-star game. They did a skills contest, three-point shootout, dunk contest. What was it? A one-on-one tournament, too, which I thought was sweet. That's smart. Yeah, a one-on-one tournament. Um, that, can create, that can create some... Uh, Back in the day, we couldn't have one on one tournament. We were too physical. Yeah, well, it, it got it got pretty physical, and I was talking uh, during fighting. it like this is what the NBA needs to bring to it. Like, can one you imagine on one. a one on one? Like that would be interesting. Uh, but this kid, his name is Fred Saunders. He's out of uh, Detroit Southwestern. Ooh, and he won the Jalen Rose. He won the dunk contest. Wow. Check the list. Wow. Amazing. That's, That's a high school kid. And he windmilled it. He windmilled. He oh, wind- after he jumped over. jumping off. over a six foot ten guy. That's tough. That's play, tough. Play that again one yeah, more time. Let me, get, let me get one more. Let me, let me get your eyes on that one more time. And I got a couple more in here. Oh. Southwestern, man, they don't produce nothing but greatness. Jalen Rose, Howard Isaac, Sean Leonard, and now, whoo. Fred Saunders, baby. Fred Saunders. Wasn't that amazing? Like, like that's what you want to see in these this day and age. Like, it's so much has been done. I think Zach Levine, Aaron Gordon, that dunk contest kind of just springboarded the type of dunks that these guys are doing. And a lot of guys don't even play in the league. Stuff you see on, on online or you know, social media. So that right there. That's what I want to see in the dunk contest yeah. coming up. Man. Daniel Smythe won the three-point shooting contest. How many did he hit? Um, he, he put up 28 points in the round. Okay. So, oh, wow. Well, oh. <laughs> he was lighting it up. It was, it was a great experience. So shout out to all the high school basketball players in Michigan. It was a fun season to watch everybody. But let's get back into around the NFL. Minnesota Vikings like a QB. We've heard JJ, but we're also hearing Derek May is someone that they're interested in. Kevin O'Connell and the Vikings specifically like UNC quarterback Drake May. I'm sorry, I said Derek May. Drake May per Fox Sports. KOC like Drake May, the former UNC quarterback, is a high floor and a tremendous pocket presence. How do you think he would fit with Justin Jefferson, Addison, and of course their new running back? Yeah, you said uh, Derek May. I was like, well, he's talking about Derek May, man. The yeah, wide receiver from yeah. Notre Dame? I'm sorry. I think that was pretty Old good. Old head. Um, it, same. That's why you said I got excited. I was thinking about you know, one of the wide receivers. Anyway, uh, this is interesting. And I have asked Ryan this question. Before we get to Drake May, I asked, asked him the JJ question. I said, how much of the JJ situation, the smoke and mirrors by the Cardinals that want you to come to four and fall in love with him, the Chargers and Jim Harbaugh, who coaches, want you to fall in love and come to five. There's a conspiracy like, there with Harbaugh, right? Like 100%. Like Harbaugh's, Harbaugh's trying to get some picks. Pumping up his boy, knowing I don't need a quarterback, so let's get this quarterback a little higher in the draft. My yeah. guy's going to fall to me. And so uh, and so now when you hear the Drake May thing, look, Drake May had his uh, pro day last week, looked yep. really good, but all these quarterbacks look good at their pro day. I think he's a bigger quarterback. He's 6'5". He's a quarterback they've been talking about now for the better part of two and a half years, so people know him. He's the guy. That you thought was going to number one, or number, excuse me, number two, starting the season, even after the season. So this seems like it may have more legs than the other situation with JJ. He's a hell of a quarterback to before the season in terms of his athletic ability, in terms of some things that you've seen out of him. But at the same time, he's another UNC quarterback. And, and that's got to be a grain <laughs> of salt. You can say what you want to. Mitchell Trubisky, Sam Howe, like at the end of the day, is he going to fall into the next line of right. UNC quarterbacks? Hey, look, for Minnesota, this is that time period sticking we talk about. This is when owners and coaches and GMs truly fall in love with the guy that they're yep. going to draft. This is when you have the meetings. This is when you have the personal workout. This is when you see the film and you watch it for the 19th time and the 20th time. This, this is that time right before the draft. They're falling in love with their guys. Yeah, and you see it mostly with quarterbacks, yeah. right? Like every year, Zach Wilson projected in the fourth round out of BYU. All of a sudden, yeah. he's a top five pick. It's you like know? quarterbacks and outside linebackers. Yeah, like those are the two. Fall in love with them. Fall in love with them. And uh, you know, to the UNC quarterback thing, like a, a streak. The longer it goes, the closer it is to coming to an end. Is one of my favorite sayings okay, about a streak. I like it. Um, and you know, UNC could hit eventually. I mean, Ohio State finally got a good quarterback in the league last year after. Countless tries, uh, so I'm not oh, gonna hold. Go. I'm not gonna hold the previous guys against him. But yeah, it is interesting to see 
that J.J. McCarthy isn't really even a part of this conversation because now everybody's projecting him to be top five. It's yeah. unreal, the leap that guy's taken. And yeah. God bless him. I think, too, it just goes to show you, you know, how hard it is to find a quarterback. Yeah, I think, and everybody is, you know, around this time, you're trying to make a guy the quarterback. You remember that 2021 draft? I mean, you got Zach Wilson, yep. Trey Lance, Justin Fields. You know, I, thank <laughs> you for uh, letting Panay Sewell drop to us because of that draft. 100%, so. Thank you, thank you, and yeah. thank you. Yeah, appreciate so. that. Uh, quarterbacks, though. Mac Jones. Miami doesn't really seem to be excited about their quarterback. There's an update on Tua. Breaking news, the Miami Dolphins. Well, then Pete, gosh darn it. <laughs> Pete has in the prep, extension for Tua, not a pressing matter for Dolphins. As of last night. And the minute I go update. on this. Now we have an update. Breaking news. Okay. Breaking news. It is a pressing topic for the Miami Dolphins, <laughs> and they are paying this dude uh, about what? What is that? Four-year, 260 million. Yeah, four years. Extension. Oh, Breaking news, Miami Dolphins signed quarterback Tua. Tongue up. I Only Lord. 65 million a year. Tua record. Breaking for 60, 260. 65 million a year. Contract extension, including 105 million guaranteed. Um, 65 million a year? Is no. my math right on that? You said what? 65 million a year. What is it? 260? It's over yeah, four. 260 divided by four. Yeah. 65 million dollars a year for Tua? You got to say it like this. For Tua? You got to do the Dr. Evil. For Tua? What does Tua want? It's the going rate for quarterbacks now. Like, you look at what What the hell is Goff going to go for but then? You, but you look at what, one, he's not as young as Tua Tungavailoa. So no, but he's better. <laughs> I understood. But at the end of the day, you're the Miami Dolphins. You got your quarterback. You got your. Well, you got your according to Pete, it's not a pressing issue. What? It's an offensive coordinator. <laughs> You got the offensive coordinator as a head coach, and Mike McDonald. You see, you see Mike McDaniel. You see the magic that they were able to con- uh, to create for the Miami Dolphins in that passing attack. And you, you look at Tua when he finally got healthy in year two. I think he won seven out of eight games he played, and then the next year they make the playoffs, and then this year too they make the playoffs. So I think he's a consistent quarterback. It's just a going rate now, though, Steve. It's the going rate. Pete, did you get April Fools? No. Is that a reliable source? Yes, sir. Where'd you get that from? That was from the uh, reporter from Miami. No. Guaranteed account. Is it a real yeah. reporter? Yeah, because that's what. Because the link that I had originally on there is no good anymore because of the update. Okay. I'll well, check listen, that. it's April sure. Fool's Day, and they just paid to us sixty-five million dollars. I just want to make sure that that's real. I hear you. Sixty-five mil a year. A year for Tua. Yeah. Tungle by Low will sign a four year extension worth $220 million, which would tie Burroughs' deal with an average of $55 million uh, per year. An average. Okay, so some of that signing bonus, a 55 yeah. tying Joe Burrow, who's been to a Super Bowl. Yeah. With 105 guaranteed. Good. God, man. These young quarterbacks yeah. coming into the league are getting paid. I mean, it, it's the going rate. You know, you asked the question, what has he ever won? Like, what did Kirk Cousins ever win? And Kirk Cousins got broke off of every stop. And he was getting broke off before he finally won one playoff game. I think they beat the uh, Saints. They beat Drew Brees. Same thing. He gets to the playoffs and consistently does that. Like, when you got a guy that fits your system, to think now that's what you're seeing, Stick. It, two quarterbacks. Like, this is what works in the NFL. It's nothing in the middle, and it's, it's nothing other than this. A quarterback that fits your system – Jared Goff fits Ben Johnson's system. Tua Tonga Vialoa, he fits Mike McDaniel's system. For whatever quarterback plays in San Francisco, fit Kyle Hand's system. If it's not one of those guys, then you gotta have a dude. You gotta have a Patrick Mahomes. You gotta have a Lamar Jackson who can't get to the Super Bowl. You gotta have a Josh Allen. You gotta have a, you know, one of those guys, Aaron Rodgers two years ago. So those are the way you win. And if you got a guy that fits your system, it, it, unfortunately, you just gotta pay him. Right? You gotta pay him. I'm I'm still scrolling Twitter right now. I, I, this cannot be real. Nah, yeah, I'm on. Uh, this cannot be real. Well, Pete. I, I, if I got fooled, then I'm sorry. But Tyreek MVP. Last night, I was reading that it was not a pressing deal. It's April Fools. Yep, got him. Got me. Well, then I suck. But we all knew that. Pete, pause. Pete. Look, dude, I, the, 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 the link here was gone, and then I saw the update, so I'm 
Then if I got fooled, I got fooled. But this is why I say I hate the holiday. Because if it wasn't April Fool's, then we wouldn't even put it up. Pete, did I screw the pooch? No, it's not that big of a deal. It's, it's Miami. Who cares? But it's funny. But now we just look like ass clowns. Oh, no. <laughs> what? No. I do. Not you. Put the camera on yourself, Pete. All right. <laughs> that, okay. Speaking of, speaking of Tua, Tua Tungabayaloa's brother, Tulia. Yeah. Tunga Bailo, who plays at the University of Maryland. He also transferred up from Alabama, where Tua played as well. Uh, great quarterback in terms of numbers, in terms of stats. He's passed for 30 touchdowns or more the last three seasons. Thought he was going to be the next Tua, if you will. Had a horrible pro day. I mean, listen, that's why he went to Maryland and not a big-time school. He went to Alabama, and then he transferred out. And that's why he went to Maryland, not a big time. I mean, like, true. he's a good quarterback. He's a good college quarterback. But just because your brother's better doesn't mean that you're going to make it into the NFL. So I'm not really surprised by that. When I saw him play, it wasn't like he was changing the game, which right. is when you when you go to a smaller school like that, you need to stand out and jump off yeah. the page. You can't just be one of the guys. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of uh, Mark, Michael Vick and Marcus Vick. Yeah. Like, Perfect example. Same example. Perfect like, like example. Marcus Vick was a, he was, he was a good, good, good college quarterback at Virginia Tech. Nothing overly special. Made a lot of plays, but he didn't have the same stuff that Mike Vick had, and he also didn't make it in the NFL. Right. Yeah. Man, I'm glad I don't fall for BS, and I was able to see through Pete $65 million a year for Tua. That would change the whole landscape of the NFL. I was having fun with that one. That would change the whole landscape of the NFL. Uh, let's take a break. Pete, tell us about the merch. And we're also doing Merch Monday right now. If you go on our Twitter or Instagram, we got a new shirt that we're giving away. It's the political sign. Campbell and Holmes 2024. Go vote for it. Pete, yeah. um, tell us about merch. That's not an April Fool's joke. Uh, go to shop.woodwardsports.com and don't be a fool like me and look better with this brand new gear that we have, the LFGRW hoodie, Brad Holmes guy, and like Stick said, you have Campbell and Holmes, the new political style shirt, and everything looks absolutely wonderful. Again, shop.woodwardsports.com, load up, get yourself some new Detroit sports merch, and again, don't look like a fool. Don't be a fool like me and update yourself with our brand new merch. We'll be right back. Every year after a cold and dreary winter, Metro Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here. And we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows how. Broadcasting live from the biggest party. It's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans. Starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party don't want to miss with Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. Come to any Lady Jane's haircuts for men and claim your throne for a king's treatment from one of our talented stylists. Open seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Just get to a Lady Jane's today and receive a precision haircut, scalp massage, hot lather neck shave, and a hot towel treatment. A haircut should not be a chore. It should be an experience. And that's exactly what Lady Jane's has to offer. Open seven days a week. Walk-ins are always welcome. There's always a location near you. Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men, it's wicked awesome. Stop searching for a vehicle and start finding one. Les Stanford Chevrolet Cadillac makes it easy. We harness the power of multiple dealerships and own the biggest selection of GM brands in the area to get you the car you need. With the Les Stanford Group, you'll have access to four different dealerships, providing you with more makes, more models, and more choices. We're connected to more than 1,000 vehicles, and with so many high-quality CPO vehicles available, you'll find new car quality at pre-owned prices. You can start and end your search at LesStanford.com today. To any Lady Jane's haircuts for men and claim your throne for a king's treatment from one of our talented stylists. Open seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Just get to a Lady Jane's today and receive a precision haircut, scalp massage, hot lather neck shave, and a hot towel treatment. A haircut should not be a chore. It should be an experience. 
And that's exactly what Lady Jane's has to offer. Open seven days a week. Walk-ins are always welcome. There's always a location near you. Congratulations to the real coach of the year, Motor City Dan Campbell. Just put your head down and go to work. It's about to be fun, man. It's about to be fun. Woodward Sports. This is not an April Fool's joke. You want to go to the Grand Slam Festival this Friday, party with us in the tent that's in the Detroit Opera House parking lot. All the DJs are going to be there. I get to be on stage. They give me a mic. I don't know why they do it, but we're going to have some fun. We got three shows broadcasting live. And you, come out and party with the entire Woodward Sports crew. We'd love to party with you. All you got to do right now is just put Grand Slam in the chat. I'll pick a winner. I'll throw you on the guest list. And you show up 21 and up. You come hang out this Friday because we are taking over downtown Detroit at Grand Slam Fest. And we're doing the block party at Brass Rail, Love and Tequila, and Annex. So it's it's going to be a party every uh, opening day, but it's even bigger when we get to party with you in Woodward Sports. So make sure you put Grand Slam in the chat right now. I'll pick a name. I'm Welcome a- back to Armani and Edwards with Maz and the gullible Pete. Oh, man. You, you, you're capping, by the way. I know exactly why they give you the microphone. For Grand <laughs> Slam Fest. You do an amazing job. Oh, it's fun. You. I was going that before I even was working in Woodward Sports. So. Yep. I have a video from an opening day party <laughs> that you were at in Michigan State, I believe, was in the Final Four. Um, and we played the Michigan State fight song, and everybody's going nuts. And you're in the video, and it's just you going. <laughs> you were not happy. <laughs> hey, man, look, man. I, 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 I don't hate. Right. But I'm not cheering. I also either. don't celebrate. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I, I, I rock with Tom Mizzo. But, yeah, you know me, man. Out in public, man. I got I to gotta stay true to my Wolverine pride. Yeah. No, it's a funny video. I sent it to my buddy who's a huge state fan. I was like, look at Braylon's face during this video. And it was <laughs> you got to find it. It was before me and you were, like, super cool. So right. <laughs> like, right, That's funny. You got to send me that video. Yeah, I, I got to find it. It's probably in one of my old iPhones. Um... I want to talk a little bit about tonight, some female basketball. Yeah, yeah let's get into it. Um, Might lose our audience, though. It, listen, <laughs> I, I, I'm being told yeah. that the women's NCAA tournament is the greatest thing that's ever happened to basketball. Okay, and it's not. But The ratings don't indicate that. The men's tournament's still outweighing it. But they, what they've done is they've had a great story with the Reese girl versus the Clark girl, right? right. They had a little matchup last year, talking trash to each other, that you can't see me. Yep. And all that stuff. LSU won. LSU won, upsetting Caitlin Clark and her squad. Now the number one seed versus the number three seed LSU with their coach that wears the craziest Kim outfits Malky. you've ever seen in your life. She was life. cold. Like in her in her day, she played a lot of tech in the eighties. I I couldn't take her serious though. If a coach was dressed like a, no. a you know a peacock talking to me like that, I'd be like, what are you, what are you doing? Like we're trying to play basketball here. But either way, I don't yeah. care about her dress. This game. Has a lot of hype be- between it. Like, Easy and I were talking before the show. He's like, this is the first female basketball game I'm purposely going out of my way to watch. Yeah. Um, you watch it tonight? Listen, I have two daughters. I root for women's sports and all yeah. that, but I'm n- I'm not crazy enough to say that female basketball is taking over men's right now. Yeah, that's real. And two things can be true. Like, a game right. can be cool. And it's a good can, game. Exactly. And you not be tuned in because you never were. Like, look, I started watching female basketball with Candace Parker uh, back in the day. Shout out to Candace CP. I watched then. I watched the case. This is a great brand. Last year's stick, the female game was better than the men's tournament. The female tournament had better ratings, better viewing, and it stems from the rivalry that is Caitlin Clark and Angela uh, Angel Reese. Like, they do a lot of back and forth. They let about they did a lot of back and forth last year before the game. They did a lot in the game. And I think country took sides. I think the whole the whole country took sides. Some people went with Angel, some people went with Caitlin Clark. And I think people have been fighting this battle. Like this whole off season leading up to this game where they'll meet uh, the one and the three seed. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm gonna tune in. I'm gonna watch it. I don't think Iowa is as good a team. I think Caitlin Clark is legit. I think Angela Reese is just okay as a player. I think the the shooting guard is a lot better. But I'm gonna watch it because they let the women have like back and forth. Like the women are aggressive now. Like men a lot more chilling, a lot more reaction. Unless you're Draymond Green. But with the women, then they play with intensity. So I will watch this game. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Honestly, uh, 
<laughs> like, yeah. I'm excited about this. I, I love the story behind it. I love that these two women are going at each other like this. And, you know, that to me, that's what's always missed from the women's end is the grit. The, 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 the ass talk. The, the nastiness. Talk, right. Yeah. The, the rivalries, you know, because for the longest time, it was like, UConn's going to win every championship. And then Tennessee and North Carolina be gonna, floating around. Right. Stanford to be same around. three teams South Carolina every now. single year. Yeah. yeah, now you got the South Carolina. Who's you going have win. some more competition in it, which is nice to see. So yeah, I, I'm actually excited to watch this game. I hope that it matches the hype yeah. because that's the one thing that'll be really bad, right? Yeah. Everybody's hyped to watch this game, and it turns out to be a dud. I ain't gonna lie, like it, it, the tournament has not been the same. It doesn't have the same cachet that it had last year. It doesn't have the same. Uh, games and intensity to me. There was a really good game though with uh, USC and I think North Carolina State or USC and Texas or whatever. But these teams aren't that good. Like I ain't gonna lie, stick. Yeah. Like I tuned in on Saturday. I was at my dad's house. Went over there. We were we were about to watch Caitlin Clark do her thing and see what she's working with. Man, we turned golf on three minutes <laughs> to the game. Like Iowa wasn't that good. It was yeah. the type of brand of basketball they were playing was it's a little tough. bit boring. It's so tough. I'm gonna watch. Because my girl played college basketball, but mm -hmm. respect it, it can get boring. Yeah. Um, what do you feel about her getting that $5 million offer from the Big Three, from Ice Cube, to go play in the Big Three? I mean, I think it's dope for Cube. I mean, you know, him and he and the NBA have this thing, this rivalry, because the NBA tried to shut, has been trying to shut the Big Three down for a while, which I don't understand. I don't get I don't it. I either. think people can cohabit. It's a different game. 100%. They can coexist, but the NBA doesn't think so. I think it was a smart move. It's not going to happen. If I was... Caitlin Clark, I would take the deal, but I just don't think you'd be able to clear it because you know who owns the WNBA. Oh, that's the NBA. NBA. And they also pay. The 100%. <laughs> the so WNBA. I don't, I don't think it'd be able to be cleared, but if you can clear it. Yeah, Kenyon Martin brought up a great point. She's like, he said, listen. The ball size? No. She may get caught on Reggie Evans on the block. Like, it's nice to think about her shooting and knocking down yeah. some shots, but in three-on-three, three, you can't hide a defender. No. Nah. And right. so she's going to have to square up against somebody, and what are you going to do? You're just going to take her on the block every single time, right? Yes. So uh, we can talk about the shooting. That's nice. But when we get down to strong, physical Reggie Evans men basketball. Men are still stronger than women. Men are still taller. Men dunk more frequently than women. It's, those are real Those are real facts. Yeah. Uh, not lying. But either way. I want to see it, though. I, I'm here for it. Don't they have a four-point shot? They do. So she just sit on that four point shot, and knock hit, that down all game long. It, it, yeah, you hit about three, four of those, man. That game can get over quick. I think they played a twenty seven or thirty one. They play to a number. So sh you get hot, knock that four pointer down. Fletcher Lives Daily says two point five hours. You're never getting back. Nah, <laughs> it, it's, hey, come on! Like <laughs> we're trying here, right? Mm -hmm. Should, should be a good time. So, yeah, make sure you're watching that tonight, and we'll talk about it tomorrow right here on the Woodward Sports Network. But speaking <laughs> of women's sports, um, I got to take off real quick. The last 15 minutes is all you guys because my daughter is starting softball or Ooh, baseball today. Cool. Coach Pitch Baseball, seven-year-old, went out and got the bat last night. We got the helmet. We got the batting gloves. We okay. got the glove. Now, now what, what company did you use for the bat? Um, it's a uh, Easton. Yeah, okay. that's the only company. There, yeah. there, there you go. Yeah. Like you yeah. said, Easton. I'm proud of. You. Got her Easton. Got her um, Rawlings glove. Rawlings. Got her a yeah. Rawlings batting hat, and uh, got her some Franklin batting gloves. So okay. oh, yeah. Franklin, yeah. One. He laced her up with everything. The, the big hurt. When yeah. you think Franklin, I always think of the big hurt. So, oh god, that was my favorite player growing nah, up. I love the big hurt. I did shots with the big hurt right. in Chicago one time. Oh yeah? yeah, really? Yeah, and that's not April Fools. I mean, I literally. He was I don't in the believe a damn was... word you're saying. Today. Exactly. He he was he was yeah. hurt and he was at the bar. And oh I wait, Tua him. just signed a forty million dollar contract. Wow, Sixty five million. million. Let's report on it. <laughs> All right. You guys have a great rest of the show. I'm out of here. Thank you guys so much for joining. Uh, Anson is in tomorrow, so that's fun. I love when you and Anson get on the mic together. Uh, so, Mike, make sure you're speaking up during this last segment, okay? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank you, you guys Mike. are good. Hey, <laughs> so we're going to take a quick commercial break. Hey, Pete, we'll take a quick one. Let's stick it out of here, and then yeah. we'll, we'll wrap it, my up friend. the show. Give me uh, less stamp for them, my friend. Oh, you want less stamp? Yes, sir. I did less stamp. Do it again. Want me to do it again? Yeah. Why not? Because Pete, Pete doesn't care today. <laughs> I'm not doing Let's Stanford twice. I did it already. Let's what? Stanford. Let's drive together. All let's right. drive there together. It there that it is. Out. All right. That goes. Works out. 
Every year, after a cold and dreary winter, Metro Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here, and we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows how. Broadcasting live from the biggest party, it's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans, starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party you don't want to miss with Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. Come to any Lady Jane's haircuts for men and claim your throne for a king's treatment from one of our talented stylists. Open seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Just get to a Lady Jane's today and receive a precision haircut, scalp massage, hot lather neck shave, and a hot towel treatment. A haircut should not be a chore. It should be an experience. And that's exactly what Lady Jane's has to offer. Open seven days a week. Walk-ins are always welcome. There's always a location near you. Lady Jane's haircuts for men. It's wicked awesome. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness! Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. Congratulations to the real coach of the year, Motor City Dan Campbell. Just put your head down and go to work. It's about to be fun, man. It's about to be fun. Woodward Sports. Is that an octopus in your pants, or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> you should see what I did there. Go Red Wings from Octopi Experts, Woodward Sports. You have an opinion? Make sure it's seen and heard. Corner, jumper, ah! Tweet us, hop on the YouTube chat, slide in the DMS at Woodward Sports on all social media. Welcome back to Reminding Edwards with Maz. It's just me, Left. Appreciate Stick for tuning in for the first two hour, hour and 45 minutes of the show. I'm your host, Brandon Edwards, my man Mike, my man Pete. How you guys doing? So we didn't get the chance to talk about Easter, like in terms of you. How was, what did you eat? I appreciate. Uh, I hope you had a great Easter with I your family. I that idea. I uh, I was fortunate to go to the Country Club of Detroit and kind of live Whoa, high on the hog okay. and the, uh, yeah with a few friends and uh, they included me in their family uh, celebrations because I'm alone right now and okay. Country Club of Detroit baby had a great buffet and it was just you know loaded up lamb you know bacon and oh, eggs man. the whole the whole work oh yeah we hit it big man I yeah. actually, that's how about in, you uh, that's Gross Point Woods right that's Gross Point Farms yeah Gross Point Farms yeah okay. how about you what'd you do. Uh, my mom cooked. We did it at my mom, my parents' house. My mom, my sister put on a great expose of food, man. I'm talking about they had just a uh, pot roast that just fell off the bone. Nice. You know, I'm no need to say Paul's on that one. Like, it was tremendous. <laughs> Macaroni and cheese is really oh, good. Collard that. greens are really good. Oh. My girl put on this uh, deviled eggs. Her little sweet recipe was smooth. And peppers, stuffing, dressing. Oh, yeah. Well, thanks. Uh, macaroni and right cheese, then. which is the best mac that you will come by this side of Mississippi. Oh. Uh, it was great, but it's family. Like, you know, whenever holidays, especially you know, Resurrection Day, Thanksgiving, Mother's Day, Father's you just want to be around family and feel good. So, absolutely. So good to do that. So, I'm glad you guys, and I hope you out there had a great Resurrection Day as well. Uh, talking about it's the end of the show, I want to talk about some hockey real quick. Michigan beats Michigan State in the Frozen, uh, to advance to the Frozen Four. Uh, five to two, which is that's why I, I hate sports where there's a there's a tournament, yep, and then there's the other, the other tournament. In uh, the Big Ten, they had the Big Ten tournament. Michigan State, they won the Big Ten tournament, but it means absolutely nothing. Zero. It means absolutely zero. They lose, and now they're out. Michigan's in. I am happy about that, and they also broke the record. Here we go. I knew you had it, That's Pete. Right, Michigan dude. is the only school to make the college football playoff and the Frozen Four in the same season. And they have done it three years in a row. Shout out to the University of Michigan. I remember one year, Michigan's men's basketball was in a national championship game, and Michigan made the Final Four, I think, uh, the Frozen Four. I want to say Michigan lost to Notre Dame, and then Michigan uh, basketball lost to Villanova. 
in the championship. Freaking DiVincenzo. Oh, right. Devin DiVincenzo, right. man. He lit, our, he lit our ass up. But well, 28 the times, Michigan has made the Frozen Four. And here you go. Boston College. Boston University, Boston College, University of Michigan, and... Uh, I believe Dayton? that. Not I Dayton. think it's. Uh, yeah, I got to double check on that other one. Yeah, Sorry. Probably, oh, Duluth, Duluth. Duluth. Minnesota Duluth. Yeah, Duluth. I like those Duluth commercials. Like the uh, Duluth men's trading. Oh, yeah, right on. Duluth. Those, That's those right. Cool, those are some cool That's commercials. So shout out to U of M. Final uh, Frozen Four yet again. It's just what Michigan does. I saw something, Pete. Yes, sir. This is for all the Michigan slappies out there. Uh, Michigan is the only college sports program. Okay, you ready for this? Okay. Only cat to win a championship in all four major cha- uh, sports. Beautiful. So the four majors are hockey, baseball, basketball, and football. They're the only institution to win a championship in all of them. So you're saying the Michigan really are the leaders in the best? I mean, you know, I, I mean, you know, you heard it. You heard, you, you heard it right. You okay. heard it right. I got you. Speaking of hearing right, are you a fan, Mike? Pete? Yes. Baseball fighting, like fighting in baseball, like throwing, like knuckling up, getting hit by a pitch, clearing the benches out, throwing your glove. Like, you like, you guys a fan of that? Yeah. I, I, it's part of baseball, man. Let's do it That's, up. It is Let's part of baseball, yeah. Pete. Everybody likes a little action, though. That's it? what I'm talking about. That's why I'm missing the hockey. That's why I like the tall dude from the Rangers, because he's starting to mix it up again. That's right. Well, looks like we had a little bit of fighting over the weekend in baseball, and uh, a lot of people got it suspended. Yeah, that's right. If I'm not right, Pete. You got that highlight? Yeah, that well, I, I got the the sound. I don't have the highlight. Let's but, yeah, the, the Brewers and the Mets uh, had a little uh, beating up uh, going on, a little little, uh, little brawling action going on. And the Tigers are at the New York Mets starting tonight for a three-game series. And Mets pitcher Johan Ramirez has been suspended three Ooh. games for intentionally hitting the Brewers' Rice Hoskins. Taking the Mets. That's right. And manager Carlos Mendoza, he suspended one game, but here is Johan Ramirez on his suspension on SNY. Sí, porque no, no era mi intención. Y como le, le dije ayer, el picheo mío se mueve bastante demasiado y a veces muy incómodo controlarlo. Entonces, cuando quiero localizarlo yeah. adentro, se me, se me va de control y se me mueve demasiado. Entonces, yo quise apelar porque sé que no, no fue con esa intención que lo hice. Yeah, I knew I, knew I was going to appeal because I know it wasn't intentional. Um, like I said yesterday, my, my pitch my pitch runs a lot. So, um, so sometimes, like in a case like yesterday, I, I, I tried to throw my sinker and, and ended up just running. And so that's why I decided to, to appeal right away because I knew I knew I didn't do that on purpose. Hey, look, at the end of the day, man, look, whether you did it on purpose. Now, we know you did it on purpose. These pitchers, they have such command. Exactly. They have such command of the ball. You're talking about painting the corners, painting the plays. They can put it exactly wherever they want to. That's why whenever players get hit, I'm not buying with the pitcher. I agree. No, I'm 100%. Buying. You're right on that, Braylon, because these guys are Major League Baseball players. They, Like you said, they paint the corners. And they, he knew what he was doing. Yeah, he did it. He did it on purpose. You got it. Yeah, he did it on purpose, and that was smooth. Uh, what's new with you guys, man? What's new with you, Mike? Any, anything new? I know I ask you that question almost every day, but something has to be new at some point in time. Uh, not really. I'm really just trying to get adjusted here. Um, that's about it right You're now. You're trying to get better than that, that Uno attacks. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is. That's that Uno. See, now you guys got me about to go to Target. Is that where you got yours from, Target? or tar- um, tar- Actually, Target. I got mine a few years ago. I couldn't oh, tell you where oh, I got dang. it from. So I'm, behind. I'm, I'm late, late. I'm yeah, late it's to been the party. for a while. All right. Absolutely. I'll, I'll have it tonight. Pete, you got to get the Uno, man. Yeah, I love Uno growing up, man. Absolutely. I'm on top of that. Draw four, baby. Do you want to get to um, some of the other, the, the bottom end of the uh, around the NFL with the gifts that have been uh, handed out? Starting with Michael Pittman, or do you want to do Shadur Sanders? Um, Let's talk a little bit about Shadur Sanders' truck. Right. I think that we can end the show on that one. All right. Now, did you see? People out there, did you see my good people? Shador Sanders bought a new truck. He's receiving a lot of NIL money, a lot of NIL deals, and right for so. He's one of the best quarterbacks in college football last year, but he makes a lot of outlandish purchases. Like, I think this is the fourth vehicle that he owns. He's got enough money for it, but four vehicles and cyber truck. This is the Kanye deal that Kanye kind of put out from Tesla. What are you? Let me ask you, Mike. What are your thoughts on this? You see, you know, young guys making money through the NIL. He's probably making three point five million a year in NIL. He's got the cyber truck. What, what are your thoughts on that? You cool with it, or is he doing too much? Uh, on one side, I'm cool with it. On the other, it's kind of too much. Yeah. You know, as long as he putting some up, saving it, I'm cool with it. Yeah. But if it's just splurging, then you know that's a problem. What, I'm, at, I'm gonna get to you, P. What, what do you think? Is, is he doing too much? Or are you cool? Are you like, all right, you know what? Why not, young man? 
He's Coach Prime's son, man. He's it's got true. he's got to play the Ooh. part, but you know that's that's the thing. But yeah, you got to watch out because he hasn't proved it yet in the pros. When he eventually gets that, I mean, just don't overstep your bounds. Is all I'm saying. Play, stay in your lane yeah. and play up to who you are presently, and then you know you can move forward. Yeah, I would actually say you know one of the things you just said kind of teared the line for me. Look, I think he's having some fun. He's making some good money, but also his dad's Deion Sanders. Yeah, and if Deion don't have a problem with. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have a problem with it. So I think Dion, Dion knows Dion to get him right. Dion to get him in line. He's already lobbying for whatever city he wants him to play in. So I think he'll have him together in that. Right are on. you watching the women's game? or Are you watching something else? I'm gonna be at pinball tonight, man. Oh, what's so up? I got, got got the pinball down to Barcade, Detroit. Every Monday is my pinball league. So okay. like Maz is bowling every Thursday. And how does how does a pinball league work? Yeah, ed- educate me real quick. Well, there's um, you either play head to head or okay. groups of four, and or you know, in a group of four, and you just you play to get the most points, and the most points move on to the playoffs, and if you win the playoffs, you get some dough. I just go down there and try. How do you get good at pinball? Like I've played pinball, but I've, I've never really advanced far. Like I, I haven't played like thirty minutes. Well, I've been playing since I was three years old, man. So good hand eye coordination. Three. Yeah, no, I was fortunate to have a pinball machine growing up. So hand eye coordination, and I'm uh, the season six barcade champion down there in my first ever season of playing uh, professional pinball. And it is professional pinball. I'll be gone April 18th and 19th. I'll be in Kalamazoo for Pinball Pazoo, which is considered like a major on the tour. So they have professional pinball. Yeah, I'm actually a professional. Technically a professional pinball player. IF, International Flipper Pinball Association. You know how we're going to end this show? <laughs> Do you know where my first date was when I attended the University of Michigan? It was Pinball Pete. Yeah, over there in Ann Arbor. Yeah, there's some tournaments there on Sunday. For my man, Pinball Pete, Peace Five Act, and Love my you, man, brother. Mike. Love you too, man. Silent, quiet Mike, who has a lot to say off air. Now, this is Armani and Edwards with Maz. We appreciate you guys for tuning in. See you tomorrow.